Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sagicor Pooled Investment Fund's Virtual Pension Seminar, Resilience and Recovery. We encourage you to have your cameras on so you can participate in all our amazing interactive sessions today. Standing here not knowing how Knowing how we'll go through this test But holding on Holding on to faith you know best Nothing can Nothing can catch you by surprise Said you've got this you've figured got out this figured out And you're watching us now When it looks as if we can Said you wrapped us in your arms. Wrapped us in your arms and stuck in. Everything we need. Everything we need, you supply. You've got this. You've got this in control. And now we know that you, you made a way. When our backs are against the wall. And it looked as if it was over, Lord, you, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Mm, you made a way. So now we're here. Looking back on where we've come from Because of you and nothing we've done To deserve the love and mercies you've shown Your grace was strong enough to pick us up And you, you made a way When our backs were hurt and it looked like it looks as if it was over. Oh, you made a way. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only, only because you say it again. Made you made a way. Made a way. When our backs were. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked as, and it looked as if it was over. Oh, And we're standing here, and we're standing here only, only because you made a way. See, if this is what you did. Say you moved mountains. You called the walls to fall with your power. You perform me. Standing here only because you made sing you move mountains, you cause walls to fall you cause walls to with fall. your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here.
Chairman. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that hath no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Let us bow our heads to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, praise and glory and honor is due your name. Strength and power are in your hands. We are grateful that you have blessed us with another day that is full of possibilities and opportunities. Opportunities to learn, to grow, and experience your goodness. In this past year, you have caused us to dig deep within ourselves and find those gifts and abilities that we might not have even thought existed. You have taught us to innovate and create and see things differently. You have caused us to appreciate the little or the simple things we once took for granted, to try new things we never considered. Some of us has, however, felt pain and grief we pray for strength and the ability to take the good with the bad, to build up tenacity and resilience. Continue to teach us how to be patient, how to be reliant on you from whom all good things flow. Where there is anxiety, grant us calmness of spirit. Where there is fear, grant us confidence in you and our own abilities. Where there is indiscipline, help us to be submissive. Where we faint and have no might, increase our strength. Today, as we're gathered in this fashion, may we be edified. May our presenters be granted clarity of expression and our participants' attentiveness. Bless us, Lord, in our businesses, in this country, Jamaica, land we love. May we continue to innovate, transform, and be resilient as we face a future of uncertainty, but one that has opportunities and blessings awaiting us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Mrs. Charmaine Rankin, and welcome to all of you to the Sajakor Life Pension Seminar this year. It's called Resilience and Recovery, and I'm sure that you agree that that is a perfect, perfect theme for this year. I ask you all, though, to turn on your cameras. Turn on your cameras. I was looking at you because I can, but now I'm looking really at you. Turn on, hello, how are you? My name is Alicia White, and I have the pleasure of being your master of ceremonies virtually this morning. And we have a great program. Yes, we would love to have you in front of us, but this is just as good. So many of you able to just sit at your desk or sit at home and join us. So we thank you so much for being here. I, I have to tell you that today is gonna be very different and we have lots of giveaways because what's a virtual session if we're not giving away things, right? So we have an award for the person who joined us first this morning, and that is Y Thompson. Y Thompson, can you wave at me, Y? <laughs> can you wave at me, hello? Can everyone wave at me? Can you see me? That, yeah. I love, I love this. This is amazing. This is great. Hello. We're going to have a good day today. So Y. Thompson, congratulations to you. You are our early bird winner this morning. Resilience and recovery is the theme of today's seminar. And I would like to invite at this time our chairman joining us to give the official welcome. His name is 
Dr. The Honorable R. Danny Williams. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank Can you? Oh, wonderful. We hear you so well. Thank you. Please go ahead. Mr. Peter Melhedo, Mr. Christopher Zaka, President and CEO, Ms. Ms. Maria Dukaran, Caribbean economist, joining us from Barbados, Sajiko Group Board of Directors and Executives, Sajiko PIF Limited Board of Directors, Sajiko Group Management Team and Staff, Trustees, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to everyone and welcome to our first virtual PIF seminar. It is a very different time that we are experiencing now with the current pandemic. And we have had to adapt quickly in order to ensure that we maintain our relationships with our stakeholders. I do hope that you are all keeping safe and that your families, team members, and organizations are faring well during this challenging period. The PIF annual seminar is one that is a high priority for the executive and management team at SADICO. As we believe it is imperative to bring the trustees together in this forum and to provide updates on the overall management of the fund. We also use this opportunity to share any pertinent news in the industry, as well as new investment strategies and the outlook for the future. Unfortunately, however, we were not able to have the forum last year as we were all in crisis response mode at the onset of COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic. However, be assured that even as we continue the recovery process from last year, you remain at the forefront of our agenda. Our relationship with you, the trustees, and our members is extremely important to us, as you have entrusted us with the responsibility of helping to secure the financial well being for you and your members' future. 2020 was a year that tested us, but we are a strong company. We are resilient, and we have the expertise and competence to weather the storm. Our promise to you is that we will do everything within our power to ensure that your member's financial future is secure. As trustees, your roles are also extremely important and critical, as you must ensure that the pension funds you oversee deliver the best the very best retirement benefits for your stakeholders. At SADICOR, we know how critical the retirement years are, especially during times of uncertainty. We want our members to have a great sense of trust in us, knowing that we have their best interests in mind when making decisions that we know will impact their finances in the long term. We're here to support you and your members on this journey. In good times and during challenging times too, by ensuring your funds are managed by the very best talent who are skilled industry experts with years of experience and knowledge. The team remains committed to ensuring that when retirement comes, you will be able to live the very best years of your life. I hope you will enjoy the program that has been lined up for you. Enjoy the rest of the proceedings. Have a good day. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams, uh, for that wonderful welcome message. And uh, may I just add my personal welcome to everyone joining us. You may have joined us a little bit late. We are asking everyone to turn your cameras on, please, so that we can see you. Uh, we can, anybody who stands on the stage can see you this morning. This morning, our virtual hub is the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. And I see lots of good mornings this morning. Uh, I see, good morning, is it Su Suzette P? Thank you for this message. She says, good morning, glad to be here. Different style, but same wonderful Sagicor Pension Seminar. Thank you, Suzette. Thanks to the Sagicor team for always making a way. We agree. Thank you so much. And then a couple of people have said, your camera is not working. We're sorry. We wish we could see you, but that's OK. We'll forgive you, and you can listen in to what we're doing here. As I said, we have plenty of giveaways this morning. I'd like you to make sure that you participate in our session fully when we start to play those games. You know the games that we normally have in the lobby of the Jamaica Conference Center or here at the Pegasus? We're going to be playing something similar. Right now, though, I'd like to invite the president and CEO of Sagicor Group Jamaica to make some remarks. Hello, Mr. Zaka. Hi, Alicia. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, everyone. And I want to specially welcome our keynote speaker, joining us virtually from Barbados, Ms. Marla Dukaran. Marla, welcome. Of course, a very special welcome to Honorable R. Danny Williams, Chairman of the PIF. And thank you, sir, for joining us online. We have with us a very distinguished, distinguished gentleman, Mr. Peter Melhedo, the Chairman of the Board of Sajiko Group Jamaica. Trustees, Sadiqor Exec, management, other team members, and of course, um, all invitees here today. Folks, I'm happy to have this opportunity this morning to share with you our key stakeholders as we look forward to a strong year ahead. Though 2020 was not the year any one of us imagined and would ever hope for, it came with its lessons. Lessons that can serve us well in business as well as our personal lives. Having to adapt to a new paradigm, we learned very quickly new ways of doing things. We at Sagicor became more creative, innovative, and efficient in many more ways. We did more with less and proved to ourselves that it can be done differently and done well. The new normal, in many respects, will become the norm of the future. And I believe the word resilience now carries with it even greater meaning as we truly showed our ability as a company to recover from the greatest of challenges. And though we are still in a pandemic, the group has a strong and focused strategy with an exceptional team driven by a culture of excellence and high performance dedicated to ensuring the highest level of service and de delivering results for all our stakeholders. Trustees, thank you in particular for playing such an integral role in the process between us and our members. Your role as mediators are critical to maintaining a strong relationship with the members and organizations and ensuring that everyone is kept abreast of all relevant information. Retirement is something we all look forward to. And when we think of those years ahead, we want to be confident that the institution charged with managing our funds is fully capable and has the competence and strategy to ensure that when those later years come around, you and your members can retire in comfort and live the life you want. We take the business of our members' pensions very, very seriously. And we understand the mammoth responsibility that we hold having the financial future of so many thousands of persons under our management. But as a strong and very financially sound company, we remain confident that we are your best financial partner to take you and your members into your retirement years. Notwithstanding a global pandemic, 2020 was a special year for us. As we celebrated our golden anniversary, 50 years, and took the time to honor and pay tribute to our founding father and your chairman, Dr. The Honorable R. Danny Williams. We also continue to lead the pension industry 
And I am very, very proud of what the team was able to accomplish. And as we go beyond all limits now in 2021, our focus remains on continuing to be resilient and creating an even stronger path to full recovery from any negative impact in 2020. I'm very, very proud of our Sadikor team, and it always shows when I speak. Thank you all for continuing to place your trust and confidence in us. We don't take it lightly. We will continue to work hard, I pledge that to you, and smart by looking at great opportunities for investment to maximize the returns on your pension fund, always being cognizant of our core responsibility, which is to ensure that your investments are secured for your future. We look forward to a long, fruitful, and rewarding relationship and hope you all will find today's proceedings interesting, entertaining, and very beneficial. Please enjoy the rest of your day and please stay safe. We asked our clients, if someone offered to pay you to do something you always wanted to do, what would it be? I think I'd want to play for Real Madrid. I've always wanted to travel the world. Drawing and being an artist. A motivational speaker. Be a DJ. Be a philanthropist. Be an engineer. What if we told you that someone could pay you to do what you wanted? And what if that someone is you? Doing something that I'm passionate about. You get all of the places off your bucket list. I anticipate that retirement will be a time when I collect a paycheck to do anything I want. That's my ultimate retirement dream. Have you ever really thought about it? Isn't that what retirement should be? Paying yourself to do what you love? Wow, I remember I, I was in the room when we did that. It was, it's kind of a throwback for us to a time when we were able to gather together. We can't do that this year. We are virtual. I love the fact that everyone is talking to us in the chat, though. So, hi, Suzette from Omni Industries, and good morning to all. Jo Joan Robinson says, good morning to all. Greetings from Caribbean Foods. I love that. Um, Greetings from the team from the Golden Age Home. Hello, team from the Golden Age Home. Ha yes, I see, yes, hey, how are you? <laughs> Good morning, all, from the Jamaica Family Planning Association. Let me see if I see the Jamaica Family Planning Association. I'm not seeing them on my screen right now, but hi, how are you? Um, the, I'm go I might say, no, I can say this right. Good morning, all, blessings from the Trans Oceans Shipping Family. Are they, are they here? Hi, hi Transocean Shipping family, how are you? And then a most amazing day to you all from, the es from Esterine, from Tip Friendly Society. Now we're gonna ask our pension, uh, our pension team from Sagicor is online with us and they want to see who is here from where. Them not see you from when, them not see you this long time. So please change your name if you can, rename yourself to Peter Melhado from Sagicor Group Jamaica, for example, or uh, Joan uh, or Marlene from Sagicor or Estherine from Tip Friendly. Metro Investments is here. Wicon, I see you all. Uh, SRC Family, I see you. Scientific Research Council, hi. Jamaica Broilers Group, I was wondering. Hi. <laughs> Tourism Product Development Company Limited, TPD Co. Lake Group of Companies. Hi, how are you? Restaurants Associates, hello, how are you? And thank you very much for joining us. If you have other trustees who were invited to today and they're not on, call them, wake them up, say hi, log on on your phone. It's mobile, you don't have to go anywhere, come on. All right, I want to welcome right now Chairman of the Sagicor Group, Mr. Peter Melhado. Hi, sir, how are you? Hi, Alicia. Hi, 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 hi. Last year you were with us in it, well, physically. You're not with us in spirit. You're, you're still here, right? This is the virtual way we say it. Are, you, en <laughs> are you enjoying this, this, this virtual way of doing things? Um, I think like everybody has, has its ups and downs. It yeah. was really the screenshot behind you, all the places on the board that 
Yeah, I can imagine. All right, I'm seeing some more people. Just before I come to you, I'm seeing some more people. Janet from Toyota, Jamaica. Uh, Michelle on, from eGov. Hi, Michelle. Greetings from the Water Resources Authority. A pleasant good morning. I'm going to ask my team if they want to say anything to me to just send me a private message in the chat since I'm here. Uh, Terry Ann Jackson from Caribbean Maritime. Hi, how are you, Terry Ann? Sasha Shepard from Alliance Investment Management. Hi. Uh, um, Beulah, I like your name, Beulah from Seaboard, and you know, I knew once we got started with this, everyone would continue um, <laughs> continuously. Patrina, Jamaica Family Planning. Oh, Suzette says her camera is back up. Hello, Suzette. All right, Mr. Melhedo, I think we're ready for you now, are we? Yes. Go ahead, please, sir, with your greetings. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Good morning, colleagues. Um, Hi, da our Director Emeritus, I'm Chairman of PIF, Danny Williams, Honorable Danny Williams, Mr. Chris Zaka, Prez, um, Mala Dukuran, Special Invited Guest, our trustees, our beloved trustees, um, and, and, and of course, last but not least, our Sajikor team members. The theme for this year's seminar, I believe, is quite apt, as it perfectly describes uh, the collective strength of all of us here today. It's the Sajikor group, your respective organizations, and us all as individuals. There are two broad meanings for the word resilience. One is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, and two, the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape. I think we can say with, with a fair amount of confidence that we've all had to spring back into shape and recover quickly uh, following the shock of the onset of, of the pandemic. Um, I'm also sure that many of you here have had to make tremendous sacrifices and adjustments to both your work and personal lives as you have adapted to the new way of doing things. This can-do spirit represents, in my mind, the embodiment of true resilience. As a group of companies, as, as you've heard uh, Chris say, Sagicor certainly has had to adapt, innovate, and adjust quickly. Oops, I'm having a motorbike go by here. The perils of working from home. Um, we've had to adapt, innovate, and adjust quickly, getting our various business lines, as Chris said, to a new state of normalcy amidst these challenging times. During these times, it was critical for us to assure our stakeholders that their peace of mind remains our top, top priority, and indeed it does. As chairman of the Sagicor Group, I am heartened by the incredible work ethic that the entire team has displayed during what has been perhaps the most difficult period in our history. I'm also very proud of what we have achieved in stewarding your pension plan successfully through this recovery period, keeping our standards high and keeping you, our stakeholders, satisfied. I'd like to say a big thank you to you, the trustees, for remaining confident in our abilities, for sticking with us through this time, and for continuing to trust us. I can assure you we will do everything in the coming years, the coming days and the coming years to earn this trust over and over again. And we never take it for granted. So in closing, let us continue to be resilient individually and collectively. And I remain confident that we will overcome this tremendous challenge to our beloved country, Jamaica. So stay safe, everybody, and have a great day today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Melhado, and thank you very much to those of you who have been saying hello. Mr. Melhado, don't worry about it. I, he hates when I call him that, by the way. Peter, don't worry about bikes. <laughs> don't worry about bikes, it's fine. We all understand, right? Can I get a thumbs up physically from everybody? Bikes, how many of you? He, me, Peter is saying, so, say again. At least the dog didn't bark. <laughs> At least the dog didn't bark. Why don't you guys tell me in the chat what is the most embarrassing sound within reason at 9 o'clock that everyone has heard on your Zoom while working from home? What's the most embarrassing sound? I, I re a rooster. What? Why are you on a Zoom with a rooster? Why so early? Rooster, Petrina says a rooster, okay. 
The rest of you don't act. Get to typing. I see you. I see you. Get to typing. Mm -hmm. Get to typing. Only Petrina wants to tell me about her rooster. I don't understand. Oh, singing. Singing. Passers by on the street singing. Uh oh, flushing the toilet. Definitely a bad one there, Debbie. Def definitely. I agree. That's a bad one. <laughs> All right, so I promised you some giveaways. For those of you who are just joining us, we apologize that you were not able to join us earlier, but now that you're here, we're gonna have a wonderful time today. Welcome to the Sagicor Life Pension Seminar, Resilience and Recovery, nothing. There's no theme that would be more appropriate than the one that we have right now. Oh, there's another one, my, my neighbor's arguing. Oh, wait, I get in the tea in the chat now, the tea. Flushing of the toilet, curse words outside, that's bad. Oh, a cat mating, okay. Wow, I don't know what that sounds like. My neighbor's arguing, that's a bad one. Dogs barking, yes. Yawning, construction equipment. The garbage truck with the horn constantly, my kids fighting, don't you hate that? My children fight all the time. Barking dog, yes. Greetings everyone, Jillian Crosskill, I feel that. The way you put the exclamation mark beside that, I feel that. Construction work going on in someone's background. And Latoya and Paula K say, yawning. How does somebody yawn to disturb your Zoom call? Wow, that's rough. Also, Lasco in the house. Hi, Lasco, how are you? That's Phyllis. Uh, Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, I'm going to ask you not to have me up. If I do have an, a moment where I do not see everything. Heather Thompson, greetings all from United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. A blessing to you. Good morning. Educom is here. Imaging Solutions is here. Caribbean Cement is here. I feel like I should have some music to just, kind of, you know, it's... It's roll call or something like that. <laughs> University Council of Jamaica. Thumbs up, Vanessa. Yeah, okay, true, true, okay. All right, so now we it's time to play Jeopardy. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? So the way this goes is you are going to see the categories. So here are today's categories. And unfortunately, well, pension plans, guess the word, and riddle me this. Those are the categories for today. So I would like, you could be one of our lucky winners, but I'd like someone to, to in the chat to choose. And if you choose one, that's the, you have to answer as well, okay? So, somebody give me, an, give me a category. Remember, it's pension plans, guess the word, and riddle me this. Just one. Terri Ann Jackson says, guess the word. Terri Ann, are you ready? You're the only one. Guess the word. Are you seeing your screen? Tell me what the word is. Track. No, 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 wait, wait. Oh, oh, Natalie, Natalie, why you teeth it from the lady? Natalie from Jamaica Broilers Group, teeth it from you. It is track record. Natalie from Jamaica Broilers Group, congratulations to you. Do we have time for one more? Do we have time for one more? Yes, okay, let's go. Riddle, oh, riddle me this from Karen Mullings. Karen, make sure you answer the question, you know. The longer it stays, the shorter it goes. Make sure, the shorter it gets. What's the answer? The longer it stays, the shorter it gets. Um, SB6197, time. Annette Wilson says candle. Debbie Ann Kennedy uh, says candle. What's the, what's the, what's the answer? It's a candle. Annette Wilson, congratulations to you. <laughs> we're writing this down, don't worry. We'll make sure that we, we're, we're right. Oh Lord, did somebody put value of money? Oh dear, that's what we're trying to not have happen to you. <laughs> All right, are we doing any more? Are we doing any more? No more right now? Okay, I, I like how you got, you guys are ready though. I like it, I like it. I see some people rolling their shoulders. Why don't you roll your shoulders back? Yeah, roll your shoulders. 
so that you can be ready and exercise those hands. I see you. I, I see when you're not exercising your hands too. I see when you don't do what I tell you to do. So please, exercise those hands. Get those fingers ready. Let's go with our next video. Right, thank you. Thank you so very much again, once again, for your business. Thank you so much for entrusting your, well, entrusting your trust in us. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so it's time to figure out some more of where you are joining us from and how long you've been a client or you've been a trustee with Sagicor, obviously, with your company. Can I see that? We love to hear more. We love to hear more about our clients all the time. And remember, we really want you to change your name, if it's possible. Sometimes it's not possible. Um, for example, my name on Zoom sometimes comes up as my daughter's name, obviously, because we're doing online school at the moment. But tell us who you are and change your name to your name and the company that you represent. Change your name to the, your name and the company that you represent. So for example, I see Natalie from Jamaica Broilers. Hi, Natalie. Natalie, you could have looked for me still. Thanks. And Pam, Pamela Campbell, I can't see where you're from though. Hi, Pamela, how are you? Hello, Gillian Lee from Sagicor. <laughs> Hello, Michael Fraser. Michael Fraser, where are you from today? I can't, I, I mean, <laughs> I can't even tell. And there's Lorn, Lorna. Hi, Lorna, how are you? Hello, Kareen from Sagicor as well. And I can't see the, I can't see the, okay. Suzette P, hi, Suzette. I was wondering if I was gonna see you. Hello, how are you? Hello, Camille Rowe. How are you, Camille Rowe? That's good. That's Suzette, everybody. That's Suzette who blessed us and said, thank you, Sajakor, for making a way. Thank you, Suzette. Hi, Janet. How are you doing? Debbie Ann and Andrew. I saw that before. Hello, Debbie Ann and Andrew. How are you? How are you? And this is Jennifer McLeod Powell. Hi, Jennifer. And then there's the University Council of Jamaica who has their own backdrop and Lisa is representing them today. Hello, ma'am, how are you? It's good to see you. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome to the stage Mr. Willard Brown. He is Executive Vice President, Employee Benefits at Sagicor. Welcome, Willard. Good morning, everyone. Um, hearing me? Yes? yes? Yes, okay. Morning, everyone. So listen, my job here is simple this morning. It is just to give a special greeting to all our trustees. I want to thank you for taking the time to meet with us this morning as we continue to serve you by giving what we consider to be relevant and interesting information. Listen, 2020, what a year, eh? It was a, 
was a heck of a year. To say it was a tough year is an understatement. And then comes 2021. But we are convinced that 2020 would have helped in teaching us some critical lessons that could make us better prepared for the year ahead. All right, I don't know how many of you actually remember the shock and stress of early last year from COVID. Let's be honest, you, you go home, you're spraying down everything, you're wiping down everything. My wife stopped me at the door and said, take off my shoes, don't come in the house with the shoes. That is how stressful 2020 was in the early days. And yet after all of that, we eventually transitioned into planning and action to roll out a roadmap to recover so that we could be more resilient than before, both at home and at work. So last year, as we dealt with the changes in how we interact with you, we had to focus on strengthening our efforts to meet with you and discuss with you virtually. We had to strengthen our digital platforms. We had to improve our self-service options to improve our processes to better serve you. And today's virtual meeting is yet another example of that. So be assured that we are partners in this with you, our trustees, the unsung heroes for the members that you represent. And you have our gratitude for trusting us and for being here this morning. So thanks once again. Eh? My speech is short. Thanks once again for taking the time to be with us here this morning. And the team, we the team, really look forward to continuing to serve you throughout the year. Thank you. Recognized as a top economist and advisor on the Caribbean, Marla has led discussions and published reports on the Caribbean implications of COVID-19, Brexit, and changing U.S. and Chinese policies, among other geopolitical developments. Marla has become a highly sought-after keynote speaker internationally on Caribbean issues, and she regularly advises private sector executives and multinationals to support their strategic decisions in the region. Marla serves on the government of Barbados's Jobs Investment Council's Finance and Insurance Committee, is a member of the advisory board to the UNDP's Regional Bureau for Latin America and the Caribbean, and sits on the board of directors of RF Holdings and of Goddard Enterprises Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Marla DeCaran. Good morning, everyone. Are you hearing me? Yep. Okay, good morning and all protocols observed. I just want to say what an absolute pleasure it is to hear the Jamaican accent so early in the morning. Um, really warms my heart and makes me happy. Thank you so much everyone for inviting me and for having me here. And let me go on and share my screen so I can get on with my presentation. Um, by the way, I love the... Um, theme for today's event, Resilience and Recovery. And um, I must say that, you know, Jamaica has always struck me as one of the most resilient places in the Caribbean. And just this morning, I opened Twitter to see someone tweeting about the new boardwalk on the Kingston waterfront, and that that will help drive um, resilience and climate adaptation for the capital. And I, I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait to run on it. It's, I'm told it's four kilometers long, so that means I can do it twice, and that's eight kilometers, which is my usual five-mile run. So I'm very excited about that. Um, congratulations to everyone in Jamaica for making that happen. So let me get into my presentation this morning, which is really, again, on resilience and recovery and what that means for pension funds and for Jamaica on the whole. So let me just move this. For the first time globally in 2019, re retirement savings and pension funds exceeded $50 trillion. It was the highest ever. And that is partly as a result of the fact that new mandatory pension plans and increased contribution rates took effect in certain countries globally. And as you can see, it's a really nice um, upward sloping chart. And this again, of course, is, is um, OECD and other jurisdictions, but it, it tells you what the global trend was. And also in 2019, nearly half of the world saw equity um, average rates of return in double digits. And that really was driven by equity market performance, which was very strong in 2019, as we know. 
and also retirement savings to GDP nearly doubled for Jamaica for the decade 2009 to 2019, as you can see in the, in the left-hand side of the chart in the gold outline box. And that remains one of the highest retirement saving rate to GDP in the Latin America and Caribbean region. As you can see from the chart, only El Salvador has a higher ratio than Jamaica does. So that's something to be very proud of indeed. All of that good stuff happened in 2019, and then boom, we had a sudden stop. And as you know, this is the first time that the global economy ever came to a sudden stop globally. It has never happened before, and we are only beginning to see the effects that that will bring. Um, we have had pandemics before, we have had global crises before, um, but this, again, this crisis is the first in 100 years or so, but never have we seen a sudden stop. What that did was we saw global equity markets collapse in the first quarter of last year with, with major indices declining by over 20%, as you can see on the right-hand side of the chart. And that uncertainty that came with the sudden stop and with the pandemic really fueled widespread anxiety, not just in the markets, but especially in the markets as well. That, however, in terms of the effect on the, on the equity market was not long lasting. As you can see on the right-hand side of the chart, there was a big V for the sudden stop in the first quarter of last year. And then things started to trend upwards again, except for the UK, which we know has other constraints as, re as it relates to Brexit. But we saw in Canada and the US in particular, after that um, sharp V of Q1 last year, we saw things starting to trend upwards again. And then we saw where you have the vaccine being announced towards the end of last year, we saw an additional bump coming there, including with the UK. This shows that the crisis that we saw was short-lived and that right now, certainly in the, in the US and Canada, we have levels in stock market indices that are beyond what we saw in 2019, with 2019 is the horizontal um, gray line. However, we know we saw the markets recovering as I showed, but the thing about it is the real economy is not quite showing those kinds of recovery signs as yet. And the IMF said that we will still be below pre-COVID GDP levels next year. For some countries, it will take two, three, sometimes in some cases, even four years to get to where we were, say, at the end of 2019 in terms of the size of the economy. And this here is showing you, for example, different regions of the world where we will be in 2022 relative to where we were at the end of 2019. So for example, the US next year will still be 1.3% smaller than it was at the end of 2019. Emerging Asia, excluding China, will be 8% smaller next year compared to the end of 2019. But why are the equity markets recovering so quickly when the actual real economy is not. And the reason for that is basically, in one short word, printing. So you've had the policy makers responding in a very strong and meaningful way in the OECD countries in particular by expanding the money supply, basically printing money, governments issuing more debt and flooding the market with liquidity. Now, different from what they did after the global financial crisis, um, where it was strictly um, monetary um, expansion, um, and it was given to the financial institutions in terms of quantitative easing in the hope that the trickle-down economics would work and they would lend money, et cetera, et cetera. We know now that a lot of this liquidity is going straight into the hands of individuals. So it's a really different approach. However, it's the same 
um, effect of expanding the money supply. And this is a chart that's showing you the money supply of the United States. The money supply doubled between 1991 and 2010, right? And then in about half that time, it doubled again between 2010 and about 2018. And then again in about half that time, it doubled again between 20, 20, 2018 and this year. The US is money supply is up 67% year over year now compared to where it was a year ago. And the new government, um, Biden, the Biden administration has announced another 1.9 trillion US dollar rescue package, almost 2 trillion um, US dollar uh, uh, stimulus program, which is going to add, if you look on the right hand side, is going to add, is going to send that blue line up another spike on the right hand side. That is massive liquidity, unprecedented liquidity, and you're hearing all kinds of talk about what that's going to do with inflation. It is already driving asset prices higher well before the real economy is showing any meaningful growth. And this index is showing you that, that you've had these recessions, but if you look at the index value relative to GDP, we've seen a massive steady increase. US housing prices are now 26% higher than they were before the, um, sorry, than they were in the global financial crisis housing bubble of 2006. So that peak that we thought was a huge peak, we're now 26% higher than that peak. In Canada, we're 16% higher than we were at their pre-global financial crisis peak. But you don't hear anybody talking about too much about housing price bubbles. And in the UK, we are 32% higher in terms of um, housing prices. So there we're seeing as well, not just the equity market, but we're seeing in the housing market how asset prices are being inflated partly by this level of liquidity being injected. But let's switch back to the real economy and talk about what's happening there. Somebody asked me the other day, what's the growth rate going to be this year in Barbados? And I said, you know, I don't know that that matters right now. I think what matters more is jobs and keeping people fed and the effect that this is having on people. When you look at what unemployment rates look like now, we will not see levels of employment recover to the pre-COVID levels until well beyond 2023. So for another two or three, maybe even more years, we're going to see elevated levels of unemployment. And that's going to have significant effects on the, real, the performance of the real economy. And growth itself will continue to bounce around globally. In this region, every single country in the Caribbean is expected to see positive growth this year relative to the contraction that all of us experienced last year, except Guyana. But that growth will not get us back to where we were before the crisis at the end of 2019. Many of us are going to take two to three years to get back to that level. The vaccines have done a good job of boosting sentiment. And we have seen sectors, however, such as airlines, hospitality, and consumer services rebounding. That is one um, sign that some recovery is taking place in the real economy, not just in the financial um, assets and, and housing assets sector. But again, we still have constraints as it relates to the real economy. All of those things that I just outlined will tell us and, and mean that global asset prices will remain uncertain. There will be some ups and downs and there will be some volatility, as we would expect. Let's take a, a closer look at Jamaica. Following the global financial crisis, Jamaican equities outperformed frontier markets globally and developed and emerging markets globally in terms of the equity markets. 
Jamaica is the blue um, solid part of the chart. And as you can see, we had a nice massive peak, massive peak towards the end of 2019 that of course was um, affected by the pandemic. But if you look at frontier markets um, and de developing markets, they well, de their performance was well below that of Jamaica's. As we know, Jamaica was one of the best performing stock markets in the world. And it has caught this Jamaica Stock Exchange has quadrupled since October 2015, despite the dip we saw last year. Quite a remarkable performance. COVID caused, caused that cliff in 2020 worldwide, but this is not a short term game, right? When you get into the equity market, especially for pension funds, we're looking at the long game, we're looking at long term growth. And let's see what caused Jamaica to show this kind of performance um, over the past, say, five, 10 years. In the first place, at the end of 2019, Jamaica created the lowest unemployment level the country had ever seen. And we've had two years before that of single digit unemployment. So it wasn't just a blip. It was a consistent, steady improvement in the jobs market, as you can see in this chart. And then the pandemic drove the unemployment rate back up. So fundamentally, the economy was creating jobs in a sustained and sustainable fashion, as you can see in this chart. And so fundamentally, everything was heading in the right direction as it relates to jobs and employment. With respect to foreign exchange reserves, again, towards the end of 2019, international reserves reached record highs in Jamaica. In December of last year, non-borrowed reserves exceeded the pre-COVID levels by 200 million. That is very important to note. Non-borrowed reserves exceeded the pre-crisis level by 200 million. And the reason I want to emphasize that is because most of the countries in this region that have seen any increase at all in their foreign exchange reserves, it's because they borrowed. They borrowed from the multilateral lending institutions, and in a couple of cases, they borrowed commercially on the, on the bond market. And in the case of Trinidad and Tobago, they drew down on their sovereign wealth fund. Very few countries had this kind of trend in their foreign exchange reserves that was not as a result of borrowing or as a result of drawing down on their sovereign wealth fund. So that, again, shows that fundamentally, Jamaica's economy was generating positive inflows of foreign exchange before the crisis and even after the crisis. So that is a very, very strong and positive thing to note. From a, from a fiscal standpoint, and this has implications for foreign, positive implications for foreign exchange reserves, Jamaica has consistently met its fiscal target and put the government finances on a sustainable path. You can see from the peak in 2012 that debt to GDP has declined steadily until the pandemic where we had that effect of a little bit of an increase. Now that effect can also be as a result of GDP shrinking, not just that debt was increased, okay? So again, fundamentally, Jamaica was doing everything right with respect to getting its fiscal affairs in order and maintaining it over a period of about eight years. As a result of all that, economic performance, foreign exchange, so external performance, fiscal performance. Jamaica did not suffer any downgrades um, last year as a result of the pandemic. Most economies in this region suffered downgrades and the rating agencies recognized that Jamaica was doing a fantastic job of managing its economy before the crisis, created strong fundamentals that kept things stable during the crisis. Now, the government of Jamaica bonds make up an important part of Jamaica's pension assets, including SAGICORS. And as you can see, as a percent of total, 
um, there's been some decline and um, relative to equities going up as well. But those bonds, Jamaica, government of Jamaica's bonds, are not considered to be riskier than its peers over the past six years. As you can see here, Belize, of course, being uh, our own Argentina, I guess, if you will, in this region, being a serial defaulter, being the highest risk one. But Jamaica comparing favorably with the Dominican Republic and with Trinidad and Tobago. My own personal view is that Jamaica should be ha more highly rated than Trinidad and Tobago, but I'm not the rating agencies. Anyway, so what will it take to secure long-term financial well-being in this very uncertain environment for you? First of all, as I alluded, allu alluded to earlier, we need to be prepared for uncertainty, right? We need to be prepared for the risk of a market correction because right now the market is pricing in liquidity and not necessarily pricing in risk. And I mean global markets because of how much liquidity is flooding the global markets as I, as I showed earlier. So be prepared that when the inflation risk is internalized or any other risk um, and that becomes priced in as opposed to just the liquidity that's being priced in right now, be prepared that there is going to be some volatility. The second thing is we need to anticipate that there will continue to be accommodate, accommodative monetary policy in terms of printing, in terms of low interest rates, for example, and also accommodative fiscal policy in terms of government running deficits and borrowing to finance those deficits because the governments need to spend money now, especially on healthcare and also um, to keep people afloat basically because of the high levels of unemployment as discussed earlier. And finally, I think we need to look at the sectors in which we are invested. I personally believe that we need to look more into those sectors that as a society, we need to thrive. We need renewable energy. We need, as we know better now than ever before, big pharma. We need to focus on, I think, investing in those sectors that, that um, serve the elderly because we have an aging population globally. And I think agriculture um, has also come to the fore as something that we really need to invest more in regionally and globally. I think these sectors might be some that you might want to pay attention to. And finally, I just want to, sh to share my own thoughts that I believe, you know, Jamaica has been through fire. I have a, a, a friend who is an economist as well in Jamaica who has said to me, he never thought that he would see Jamaica this is in 2019 when we were speaking. He never thought that he would live to see Jamaica get to the point that it was at then in terms of its level of growth and stability and job creation. You have overcome and you have outperformed. And you have a proven track record. Over the past, say, seven, eight years, um, which began with the IMF's program, Jamaica has consistently strengthened its institutions, as we saw recently with the passage of the legislation to give the central bank its independence, um, the fiscal council, uh, which I think is fiscal commission instead, sorry, I, forgive me if I got that wrong, um, the economic growth council, the economic policy oversight committee, all of these institutional um, constructs and the building of these institutions is what underpins Jamaica's socioeconomic progress over the past seven or eight years or so. Also, the ease of doing business reforms that support the private sector and the ingenuity of the private sector itself is part of what underpins Jamaica's performance. And these two things combined, in my view, is what has given Jamaica the lift that we saw in the past few years and will continue to carry Jamaica forward, even throughout this crisis. Last year exposed our vulnerability and tested our resolve. This year is about overcoming those vulnerabilities and securing long-term well-being as a nation, 
as an entity for Sadrico and also for the Caribbean. And I know that all of you, all you Jamaicans, you little boy, you Talawa, and you will get through no matter what Guam. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marla. It, you, I mean, I, such a comprehensive presentation. I hope, I can't see you right now, Marla, but I hope you're still there with us. Um, Marla has so graciously uh, said that we can pose any questions including what was the most embarrassing sound in the background of her Zoom over the last year. Right? Right? <laughs> by the way, the way we applause, or we, the way we give a round of applause on Zoom is by everybody typing in a one. So let's do that now. And if you really want to make a loud round of applause, you type one, 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 one. Paula Kay? I think I should give you a prize because you are so, you are so responsive all the time. Anyway, let's have a round of applause for Marla Dukran, please. Oh, look at, look, look at my production team wanting to applaud. All right, I'm also waiting on questions. Oh, oh dear. Look at all, look at all of this, Marla, all these ones. Yes. It's a, wow, excellent presentation for, uh, Natalie from Jamaica Broilers really enjoyed the presentation, I can tell. Especially the lick about with Talawa part, right? We're gonna overcome this, no matter what it is. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Krishina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really enjoyed it, Marla. I, I really appreciate you joining us. And what I do love about virtual conferences is that we can press a button and not necessarily get on a plane to present anything these days. Have you, aren't you loving that? Yeah, all right, so, so we can stop applauding now and ask the questions, please. <laughs> Thank you. Our first question though, Marla, if you don't mind, um, and I have it here, what examples of institutional strengthening can you point to that have placed Jamaica on the right path? Are you hearing me? I am. Right. Um, so my favorite one is the most recent one where the legislation was passed to give the central bank independence so that you won't have a situation where the minister of finance can go to the governor of the central bank and say, I need you to print money, um, which is a problem we've had throughout the Caribbean. Um, and not just the Caribbean. I mean, Venezuela is right now the poster child for um, for, for that type of a policy response, Zimbabwe as well, most notoriously. So I think that that sets uh, the tone for future um, ministers of finance to take note that they have to be careful about how they manage their fiscal affairs. So that was one of my favorite and the one I would like to note the most. Um, I also would like to highlight all of the ease of doing business reforms that, that the Jamaica government has implemented over the past several years that has really given a lift to the private sector. I have to say that in re this region, it, it pains me and it breaks my heart that we have this culture of suspicion for the private sector that I guess we inherited and historical factors have driven. And here in Barbados and in Trinidad, I think it's especially bad, to be honest. Whereas in Jamaica and um, in the Cayman Islands and in the Dominican Republic, for example, you do have this recognition of the fact that the government cannot and does not sustainably create jobs. It's the private sector that sustainably and, sus and in a sustained fashion creates jobs. And that everything that the government, successive governments have done to support private sector activity is what I would like to highlight as well, including, um, which I mentioned in, in the presentation, the Economic Growth Council and the Economic Policy Oversight Committee, which I think drives accountability for the policy agenda being implemented. And it drives transparency, which is also very important and is missing everywhere else in the Caribbean in terms of what the government is doing and how it's being implemented and being held accountable for the implementation of those policy reforms. So those are the things I would like to highlight. All right, thank you. And then also, what types of reforms do we still need to make to further stimulate the investment environment? Well, in the first, thing, first place, I would like to talk about the informal sector, meaning the sector of the economy that's 
of the books. In most countries in this region, we have an informal sector of maybe 30, 40, 50 percent of GDP. In Haiti, for example, it's probably 75 percent of GDP. And so the larger the informal sector, the smaller your tax base, the weaker your economic um, data in terms of its reflection on what's actually happening, and then therefore the weaker your po and the less relevant your policies um, will be. So I think that another reform should be to tackle large and widespread informality. And one of the best ways to do that is to drive financial inclusion. And I want to congratulate the Bank of Jamaica for taking the step to introduce a pilot for a digital Jamaican dollar in the near future, because that will help to drive financial inclusion, which helps to address and reduce informality. All right, thank you very much, Marla. There is, there is many questions in the chat that speak specifically to, can we have a copy of your presentation? So I think now is the opportune time to say that our entire seminar is actually recorded. Getting the PowerPoint might not have the same kind of effect as seeing you present it one more time. So we will email that to everyone. And I particularly like this one from um, Paula Kay, who said, was a very positive outlook given my anxiety, appreciate her viewpoint. And isn't that lovely right now that we can give some kind of positive outlook so that we can have something to look forward to after this. After this, there is going to be an after this. So after this, we do have something positive to look forward to. Now, I do have another question. However, I can't, I'm not able to see it right now. I did receive it to, uh, virtually. However, I'm not able to download it. I don't know if it's possible for it to be typed and sent to me or if it can be uh, given to me. Uh, we, we have all kinds of virtual ways of doing things these days. So if that is possible, Marla, if you could just hang on one more second um, so that we can make sure to get that question. Peter Melhedo is actually asking the question. It's what are your thoughts on recovery in the travel-related segment across the Caribbean? Um, I think that different countries will show different um, rates or you know advances in, in recovery um, over time. I think those countries that have done the best in terms of controlling the domestic spread of the virus um, will, I mean, people won't want to travel to a, a destination where there is community spread and the virus is raging in the first place. Um, so, for example, the countries that have done the best, in my view, Cayman Islands did really, really well and has consistently outperformed everybody else. In Barbados, we had been doing very well for a while, but we've had a spike more recently. Hopefully, in the next week or two, we will be out of, of, um, of our lockdown. But um, I think those countries that have managed it well will, will recover faster. I also think that those countries that have a competitive tourism product will also perform better. Now, there are countries that have a very high-end tourism product that have not seen their um, tourism fall off because people arrive in private jets and they quarantine in any event in their private fancy villa. So you have really, really niche high-end destinations that continue to see strong numbers like that. Um, but the countries that, that I think will also perform better are those that have a competitive product, um, whereas those that are expensive and not necessarily good value for money, because the discretionary spending is suffering, I think those destinations will see some, some hard times with respect to their tourism numbers. All right, thank you, Marla. One more question from Chris Zaka. What thoughts yes. do you have on foreign exchange controls placed on pension fund investments in Jamaica and other Caribbean nations? Yeah, I was, I was actually typing my response, but easier to say it. Um, I actually think that that's a major area of reform that's needed. But I think that it's really only appropriate for those countries that have a strong FX management system in place. So for example, if we relax FX controls on how much pension funds can invest in overseas assets, in Trinidad, for example, 
you will have massive capital flight, right, outside of Trinidad. And already there is a balance of payments deficit and a current account deficit. And so those, it'll be exacerbated, those deficits will be exacerbated. However, in Jamaica, you have a situation where your inflation targeting regime has meant that, as I showed in my presentation, you've had consistent increase in the foreign exchange reserves. You no longer have a problem of capital flight. And therefore, I think Jamaica is ripe for that kind of a reform where, from a legislative standpoint, they can reduce the, the restrictions on pension funds investing in foreign denominated assets. I think other countries in the EC, for example, where they have no problems with their FX management, I think they are also good candidates for that type of reform. But again, it depends on the jurisdiction and how well they're managing their FX reserves. Thank you so much, Marla Dukaran, once again. Uh, can I, can, let's make sure I pronounce this correctly. Dukaran. Dukaran, yes. Dukaran, There's yes. Dukaran Avenue in Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. We hope that you'll be able to stay a little bit longer. Um, for those of you who have been asking questions or are not seeing the questions that I'm asking, our presenters and our, the, our, our presenters for this presentation, if they're joining us, are on a different Zoom than you. So I know some of you are trying to look to see where. So we're connecting virtually, um, but you might not necessarily be able to see. So that's a question that some persons have asked. And then earlier on, I had asked the question, how many of you are, or to tell us where you're from, how long you've been a trustee with the company that you are working with. So Annette from Unique Vacations, sponsored trustee since 2018. Hi, Annette. Joined Jamaica, this is Natalie now from Jamaica Broilers, joined Jamaica Broilers in 2018 and worked as a HR coordinator where I assist with the benefits portfolio. Thank you for the awesome job that you all are doing. Joan Robinson Duval, member trustee for Caribbean Foods, nine years. Um, Antoinette McCoy Nemhard, Caribbean Blue Skies Energy Limited. She never told me how long she's with us though. And Ava May, I think it's Ava May Duval, trustee for OGM Integrated Communications for 19 years. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything that you have done. We've packaged, we hope you're enjoying the seminar so far. Are you? Thumbs up, up. Thumbs, yes, fantastic. So glad that you are able to join us. Sajakor Life, it's our pooled investments pooled investment funds seminar that we have annually, resilience and recovery, because we are resilient for sure as a people and we will recover. So let's go to our next video and then following which you'll have a presentation, which I know we all are very much looking forward to from our very own investment team. Most people spend the majority of their lives working hard with the desire of leaving their careers behind to enter the new world of retirement. Unfortunately, most persons fail to properly plan for the golden years. Achieving your dream lifestyle in retirement requires careful planning. Sajikora understands the importance of planning for the future, and we are here to assist you in reaching your goals. I'm, I'm actually back. I, it, it's me, because we have to play Jeopardy again before we have our presentation. Don't you love the music? I like it, yeah. Okay, so let's get to our chat here. Oh, hi. Hi, June Bryan, who has been a trustee in excess of 10 years at Caledonia Medi Medical Laboratory. Member trustee, Caribbean Elevator, 26 years. Sharon, wow, that's Sharon Edwards. Nicole Miller-Douglas, National Housing Trust member trustee, since 2012, eight years. That's, that's a long time too. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for joining us. All right, so you could be one of our lucky winners today. Um, remember our categories are pension plans, guess the word, and riddle me this. Who wants to go? Somebody choose one for me. First person to choose, and then we have, that when you choose, then we'll pick one. Hi, Cheryl Lewis, TPD Co, 20 years. Cheryl, what, oh, who, uh, Megan Lindo Pension Plans. 
pension plans. How much asset class specific funds are offered by your investment manager, Sajikor? Citeno, Yemen. Suzette is like, should I just choose guess the word? This is what I'm saying. So the question is, how many asset class specific funds are offered by your investment manager, your investment manager, the best there is, is Sajikor. Uh, Megan Lindo says eight. Steven Silvera says eight. Uh, Sandra Barnett says 12. And somebody named CML says 12. Let's have the answer, please. Seven. Nobody never get that right. 12, are you guys hearing that? They'd like 12 or at, at minimum 12. Thank you very much, but that's not the correct answer. It is actually uh, seven. Blossom Diedrich, trustee Met of Metro Investment. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your service of 20 years. Let's have another one. Guess the word. It's true, Karen, guess the word. Guess the word. Ooh. I like this one. I see some water on the left. I see money on the right. What does this mean? Hi, Joyce Stewart, Statistical Institute of Jamaica, sponsored trustee since 1993. Uh, uh, okay. Ta Lisa says, time is money. Karen says, retirement. <laughs> Steven Silvera says, vacation savings. Liquid assets. Oh, okay. Liquidity. Pool funds. I, I, I love these answers. Retirement fund, retirement savings. I love how all of you feel like retirement means you're gonna be on the beach. I love that, that, that pleases me greatly. That's a nice way of putting it. So can I have the answer please? Retirement savings, who is it, who is it that had it first? Retirement savings, that's Sajon Admon Jets Limited. Thank you very much. I did, see your, I did see your background saying Jets. Thank you so much. All right, so we, I think we have time for one more. Do we have time for one more? Let's do one more. And Nordia, that's not the answer, using your money on your term in the future. I mean, really? That's a lot. <laughs> All right, Shanae Ford is only one more. Guess the word. Karen, I think we should do a riddle, it's true. Karen, let's do a riddle. What has many keys but can't open a single lock? Oh, Steven Silvera says piano, 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 keyboard, piano, 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 keyboard. I, I think you know the answer. Let, let me see it, piano, yeah, you're right, you're right. You've, you've heard that one before, clearly. That one, is, that one was won by Steven Silvera from Chassie Ramson. Hi, Steven, how are you? And hello, Edmundo Genez. I don't know if this is how you pronounce it, but it was just so lovely. I had to let it roll off my tongue like that. Um, from Jets Limited, member trustee for 23 years. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our uh, investment team with their presentation. Oh, good morning, trustees and all attendees. It is always a pleasure meeting with you, and we're especially grateful this morning that despite the challenges that we're experiencing, we're still able to meet with you in this forum just to provide you with information on the performance of our pool funds, as well as to look at our outlook for 2020, and of course, the strategic opportunities as our economies move on a path to recovery. Our presentation this morning will cover three areas. These include a brief overview of the structure of Sagicor PIF Limited, the trust subsidiary of Sagicor Group, 
that holds the pension assets for our clients who invest in the pool funds, and this will be done by me, Candace Villiers. Neil Kellimon will then recap the 2020 economic performance and the performance of the pool funds, which will be followed by the outlook and a discussion on the strategic opportunities as we trot on the road to recovery with our chief investment officer, Sean Newman. But before we do the brief refresher, we will quickly take a look at Sajikor in the pension industry. We have been in the pension industry for shy of 50 years and have garnered great experience, which has led to us holding a market share of 31% of pension assets based on the last industry statistics provided by the FSC as at September 2020. Statistics also show that of the 378 active pension plans, Sagicor currently manages 214, which represents 57% of the active plans in the industry. Or when looking at the labor force, our membership represents 4% compared to the total of 12% who participate in a private pension arrangement. Innovation, along with experience, has significantly contributed to the performance of Sagicor PIF Limited, which has generated a return of approximately 20% on average over the last 45 years. This return ahead of any pension fund's number one enemy inflation, which averaged 15% annually over the last 45 years. As at December 2020, we managed 205 billion worth of pension assets. Now, prior to 2020, the value of pension funds under Sagicor's management has moved on a positive trajectory year over year due to contributions and appreciation on the invested assets. The reduction in 2020 was primarily driven by a fall in prices across the three main asset classes in the initial stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have seen improvements in the value of the funds on the management throughout the latter months as asset prices recover along with continuous inflow of contributions. As at December 31, the 205 billion in pension funds under management represents a combination of the three different investment approaches offered by your investment manager, Sagicor. The first being the deposit administration fund, which offers for capital projection and a guaranteed rate of return, a return that moves in tandem with interest rates, representing two billion of funds under management. Next, we have the self-directed approach in which assets are held in the name of pension plans, representing 59 billion. And of that amount, 21 billion is invested in our third and final approach, which is our focus for today, and that accounted for roughly 165 billion, or roughly 81 billion of fund, 81, sorry, percent of funds under management. This 165 billion worth of pool fund assets is held in trust with Sagicor PIF Limited. Established in 19, established in 1972 with a strong corporate governance in place, Sagicor PIF Limited offers to our clients the opportunity to invest in nine diverse type one pool funds with exposure to equities, real estate, and fixed income investments. With the assets of Sagicor PIF being segregated from that of Sagicor Group, the ownership of the assets resides with the custodian trustee, Sagicor PIF Limited, and Sagicor Life Jamaica Limited operates as the managing agent for these, for Sagicor PIF Limited. Under the strong corporate governance structure, Sagicor PIF Limited is a regulatory approved type one pool fund with the sole purpose of investing assets of approved superannuation funds and approved retirement schemes. It does not hold any asset deemed ineligible for pension funds. The entity has an independent board of directors with experienced representatives from Sagicor, as well as senior members from pension boards of active pension plans. And an independent audit is done as at September 30 of each year, which is available to you. Sagicor PIF board is chaired by Dr. The Honorable R. Danny Williams, Director Emeritus, Sagicor Group. Other members include Peter Melhado, Chairman, Sagicor Group Jamaica, 
Christopher Zacco, President and CEO, Sajikor Group Jamaica, Michael Fraser, Director, Sajikor Life of the Cayman Islands, Dennis Morrison, Economist and Senior Director, Jamaica Bauxite Institute, Elaine Robinson, former Deputy CFO, University Bursa, University of the West Indies Mona Campus, and Andrew Williams, CFO, General Alumina, Jamaica Limited. The investments offered currently include nine pool funds across the risk spectrum with fixed income investments for offering for the lowest level of risk. Sorry. These include the CPI fund, which is our most conservative option, providing a hedge against inflation. We have the money market fund, which invests in short-term bonds, the fixed income fund, which invests in longer tenure bonds, and the pool foreign currency index fund, which provides a hedge against the depreciation of the Jamaican dollar. There are two balance funds, namely the Global Markets Fund and the Pool Diversified Investment Fund, which offers medium risk exposure. These funds provide a balanced mix between equities, fixed income, and real estate investments. The real estate option, the Pool Mortgage and Real Estate Fund, provides a medium to high risk profile, while the funds with the potential for greater volatility include the Pool Equity Fund, uh, the Pool International Equity Fund, along with a new pool fund option coming out of the recently amended investment regulations, the Pool Venture Fund, which is set to launch by the end of this calendar year, providing clients with the opportunity but not obligating clients to invest in private equity and debt. The investment team responsible for these funds is headed by Sean Newman, Executive Vice President and Chief Investment Officer, Sajikor Group Jamaica, um, who comes with many years of experience in local and global financial markets. Also, you have many other familiar faces, Donit Scarlett, Brenda Lee Martin, Faith Vincent, Neil Kellyman, who is directly responsible for you or valid clients. Robert McKenzie, Shane Walters, and myself, who also forms a part of the investment relations team. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for allowing me to refresh you on the structure of Sagicor PIF Limited, and I will now hand over to Neil Kellyman, who will recap 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Candice. Morning again, trustees. Um, it's really a pleasure to be meeting with you in this um, type of forum. Having all of you in the same space, well, virtually, um, it's really good to have all on one platform so you know, we can have a, a conversation together. So as Candice said, what I'll really be doing is just looking on the history, what happened um, last year, um, <clears throat> some of the historical returns, also what happened in the economy, and then um, Sean will come after me to do some of the projections, you know, probably the more exciting part of the presentation to kind of tell you what he thinks is going to happen um, in the future, looking at his, uh, his crystal ball, all right? So let's get started. Let's give you an idea what had happened um, last year. So as we all know, I mean, the buzzword these days is, you know, COVID-19, COVID-19. So last year we had our first COVID-19 case in March, right? Uh, in that coincidental, as it was the same month that the WHO declared the whole virus a, a pandemic. So you would have had a lot of panic in the market at that time, a lot of uncertainty. So uncertainties would have led to volatility in the financial markets, and the uncertainties also lead to border closures, restricted movement because of curfews, as well as you know people working from home. I'm sure some of you are at home right now um, joining us. Uh, so a lot of these things led to you know, increased unemployment with the economy kind of shutting down. Permanent business closures, disruption in global travel, 
Uh, in short, a lot of chaos took place in 2020, right? Many people are hoping that they could start over 2020, start over a new year, you know? It's now behind us, and um, we are going to kind of look at also what's going to happen in the future, a brighter future. It's not all doom and gloom. So how did governments react, right? They have to be decisive in their actions. They have to look to implement stimulus packages, and our guest speaker spoke about that, um, the U.S., a huge stimulus package, um, at least two, and I think a third one on the way also. They have to be endorsing the manufacturing of uh, vaccines, you know, because they realize how important this would be for the recovery of economies. So a lot of money has been, been pumped into economies to kind of get the thing moving again. But there are some industries that actually did well, um, especially the tech industries. Everybody is working from home, everybody working virtually. So all these tech stocks, everything that has to do with technology, they just went straight through the roof. So at least those have recovered, probably even better than um, when they, where they were in the previous years, right? But we're at a point now where vaccines are being approved, distributed worldwide. It is bringing a glimmer of hope. Um, and I think this will result in most markets actually stabilizing. You know, um, and some of them are, has actually started to stabilize already. Looking at tourism, I mean, everybody knows what is happening in tourism. <clears throat> no one is traveling. Um, no one coming to Jamaica. But if you look on this graph, it's not only about Jamaica. It's a worldwide issue. Uh, at least 65% tourism plummeted in March, and it reached a low of near 100% in April and May, <clears throat> when compared to the previous year. Jamaica kind of followed that similar, similar path, where some improvements actually started to take place in second or third quarter, as the, some borders started to you know, kind of reopen, and some movements started to take place. But at the end of December, however, the reduction was at 70% in Jamaica when compared to where it was before. So you can imagine if you're only getting 30% of what you used to get, um, most hotels in Jamaica must be operating at a loss right now. I mean, it goes without saying, right? GDP, what has happened to GDP? As this graph show, I mean, <clears throat> it was, you know, doing well pre prior to COVID, but then all of a sudden, you have this dip. So it's no surprise. With the slowdown in economies, you know, um, you expected a contraction like that. So Jamaica's GDP contracted in every quarter of 2020, but Q3 showed some improvement um, over Q2, you know, a slight improvement, which is a good sign. Some amount of growth might be, you know, slowly starting to take place. Unemployment, well, we know the story with that. Unemployment rate in Jamaica was trending downwards, you know, since 2017. So we were on a good path, you know, a good trajectory but then it rose from 7.3 in January to 10.7 in October 2020. Um, it is important to note that most of the reduction, can you imagine, was, would have been due to people in the entertainment industry and the, the travel and tourism industry, right? Those would have been some of the hardest hit um, over 2020. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of obvious, you know, why those would be, right? <coughs> In terms of exchange rate, the dollar last year was on a roller coaster ride. You know, if you look on that first graph, up and down, up and down, right? Um, when it gets away, BOJ every, now come, BOJ every now and then comes in and tries to defend it, you know, it revalues, then it, it goes away again, you know, so that, that's what, why the graph looks like that, a little roller coaster ride. Um, <clears throat> they have been using the NIR to defend the dollar, and if you look at the NIR, it's kind of, you know, came down a little, um, it came back up the latter part of the year, you know, but I'm not too sure how much BOJ will be willing, you know, going forward to use the NIR to continue defending the dollar, especially at a time like this when there's no tourism, no US dollars coming in, you know, could be a challenge going forward, you know, but let's wait and see. All of that last door, I think remittances kind of came to our rescue, 
with the remittances actually increasing um, in 2020. So it kind of shows that you know, Jamaicans, they are family abroad who tend to look out for them even more when the going gets tough, you know, when things are down. You know, so that, that, that's the only explanation for more money coming in last year from remittances than the year before, which was a better year, right? So Jamaican people are, are looking out for each other. The stock market around the world, um, they all dipped. Um, as a matter of fact, in March, when it was the, the virus was declared a pandemic, all markets went down below 20%, like immediately. Um, <clears throat> it was kind of crazy, a lot of panic, as I said before. But the truth is, Japan and USA has fully recovered almost. Actually, they're above the levels they were before. Uh, can, you can imagine those economies have a lot of tech companies and manufacturing companies you know, involved in that space. So they would show a lot of resilience and recovery in terms of that market. The UK market, um, a little better than Jamaica, still negative, um, down about 14% still, but a recovery from the 24% in March. Um, Jamaica is probably the, the one lagging everybody else, the last one to start to recover properly, but it's albeit still a smaller amount of recovery, down 21% from the 26% that it um, plummeted in March. In terms of interest rates and inflation, they're both going in the same direction. They're both going down, right? Um, not surprising. I mean, with economy not so robust, not a lot of spending, inflation can remain low and will, will remain low, but also government, um, looking to, government looking to stimulate the economy by keeping interest rates low, getting people to borrow you know, and do other things. Um, so that was kind of deliberate, and that is why both of them are in that direction, um, relatively low at this time. And we expect that to remain so going through 2021. Let's now have a look at the performance of the funds. Um, as I said, I'm looking at the history. Sean will look some more on what he thinks will happen going forward. But the pool fixed income fund, which has mostly our medium to long term bonds, this fund did, did very, very well in 2020. Actually, both the 12 month and the five year average annual returns you know, were way ahead of the benchmark, as well as inflation. I mean, which is, is pretty good in a, in a COVID year. Main reason, because uh, the average yield or coupon on the bonds of about 7.9% was higher than the rates in the market currently. Um, our rates have been trending down. So most of the other bonds will be underperforming, while our bonds, we have bought them long before COVID and they held their value and actually increase in value sometimes as rates went down, you know, so that's, uh, that fund did extremely well. The foreign currency fund, um, very good performance over the last five years, but because of the contraction in prices of the bonds last year, um, the, in the portfolio, the, the 2020 results, uh, that, that the 12 month showed a small underperformance. It was a huge underperformance, but it's understood why it would underperform based on how the bond values of those global bonds went down last year. Uh, oh, it's a good to know that the fund returns were way ahead of inflation though, which is you know, another benchmark. So it maintained real value, and that is um, a very good thing. The next fund coming up is the pool money market fund. Uh, done very well over both periods, um, despite consistent contraction in yields, right? Uh, over the last 12 months, it did very well in terms of beating its benchmark um, over the two periods. Uh, inflation, though, would have been ahead of the fund last year. Uh, can you imagine if, if T-bill rate is only 0.9% and you're in, investing most in short term, more than likely inflation would be ahead of your return over the last 12 months. But over the last five years, it has done pretty well. In terms of the pool CPI fund, um, Candy spoke about this earlier. This fund is kind of special, in the, from the point of view that this is the only fund that did not dip in value in 2020. It remained positive the entire year. Um, and that is good. 
One of the main reasons it would, it would remain positive, though, is because it's linked to inflation, and inflation, on average, would have been positive, even though you'd have had some dips every now and again, but uh, this is the only fund that remained positive, held its value for the entire year. Um, it, normally, it offers a, a return of 1% to 2% above inflation, and so it was designed to beat inflation, and it was very successful in its mandate last year and also over the last five years. In terms of the pool equity fund, this fund, the constituents of this fund um, would have been different from the JSC main index. So you would find that um, there was a, some amount of underperformance you know, as a result of that. Uh, some of the top, the top weighted stocks would have underperformed the main index and that's the main reason for the slight lag that you're seeing in that fund. However, over the five years, the return was still ahead of inflation, which is a very good thing, still preserving um, real value, real purchasing power. One of our other funds in terms of equities is the international equities. The previous one it was local equities. International equities, as the name suggests, invest in um, stocks outside of Jamaica, um, many of them on the U.S. market. So you will see there the returns in absolute terms are relatively high. Um, however, it lagged behind the benchmark by about 2% over the last five years on average per annum. The underperformance mainly due to the difference in the constituents of the, the International Equity Fund um, when compared to the S&P 500, right? So that's the main explanation for the slight lag. But the, it offered a really high return over the period though. Um, in absolute numbers. The mortgage and real estate fund underperformed inflation in 2020. Um, as you can guess, mostly because of the fallout in the tourism sector because our real estate fund has a, a decent amount of exposure to that sector. Um, the five-year performance though was ahead of inflation, which is a benchmark. It is expected that the restructuring of this portfolio, which was done in January of this year, will result in much stronger performance going forward. I mean, the last five years wasn't bad, um, but we expect to be doing even much better going forward after this restructure that we just did. The pool diversified fund. All right, so there was a slight, there was underperformance in 12 months due to equity holdings and real estate holdings because this fund holds assets in, across all the other funds. So the equities and real estate would have dragged it down a little. Um, however, the 20, also the 2020 underperformance would have tightened the portfolio's five-year return causing um, six, a 6% six trailing in the benchmark, trailing the benchmark by, six, by 3%, right? So it's mostly because of what was happening in the equities market as well as the, the pool real estate fund that um, caused the, the lag in terms of the performance. But despite the challenge in the year in 2020 though, the, the, the DIF for short as we call it, um, it provided real rate of return you know, ahead of inflation. Global markets fund, one of our balance fund, um, most linked to US type in, um, investments again. Um, it's only slightly underperformed its benchmark in 2020. This was due mostly to falling prices for the equity holdings which are impacted by COVID-19, right? So it wasn't only the Jamaican stocks which were impacted, but the, some of the holdings we had in this portfolio overseas would have been impacted also. Um, the five-year performance, however, was much more dominant, right? Beating the benchmark by 4%. Um, and that's a, a dominant performance over five years. In terms of the history, when we look at the last 10 years, every single fund that we manage was way ahead of inflation, right? And that is pretty good. Um, the best performer, and you need to take note of this, is the same fund that probably dipped by a lot last year, the equity fund, but that's the best performer over the last 10 years. Um, <clears throat> this is a good indication that, you know, even though it, that, that fund goes through a slump every now and again, like last year, there is a very good chance that it will rise again, and as a matter of fact, rise to a point where it outperforms all the funds again. 
and also inflation, right? So it's this, this good to, um, you know, not to look at just a short term what is happening, but this fund over long term will do well, and hopefully we'll start to see the improvements in 2021. Already the market is kind of moving sideways, and looks like it's kind of poised to, you know, to burst through and uh, have some positive movements before the year ends. The story over 30 years is the same. Um, all the funds ahead of inflation. Um, however, we would have only had three funds um, 30 years ago, and that is why we only have three funds in this history, and the graph is not as full as the one before. Um, and these three funds, since their inception, have been doing better than inflation. All right, so the good news is real returns are being produced, generated by all the pension funds over the long-term period over which um, you are investing as pension clients. In terms of uh, industry update, you would have gotten some correspondence from us. Um, well, from me, you'd have seen me sign it. And we were discussing the fact that the BOJ has asked us you know, to voluntarily restrain from um, having clients increase their percentage holdings in the FX type funds. And these funds are the pool FX fund, the pool international equity fund, and the global markets fund. So they're asking us not to allow clients to increase their percentage holdings over what they had in November. They're not asking them to sell, but they're asking them to maintain. Um, however, we can have a case where um, and bear in mind, all the recommendations that we we'll make to you is bearing all this in mind. They don't try not to put too much in these funds, right? Because we have to adhere to the rules. Um, <clears throat> but bear in mind that if the funds outperform all other funds, then your percentage holdings will increase. And the BOJ said they'll forgive us for that, but we'll also have to come to them and give them um, a timeline over which we will remedy that. So, I mean, by taking profits and redistributing funds, um, those funds into other funds. So, we'll be, we are actively managing the situation, and you'll always be hearing from us, um, you know, regularly. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll have the communication. We keep it going with all our clients, all right? Uh, that's it for me, for my section. Um, Sean will be coming on to look at the the future, um, outlook, strategic opportunities, and its road to recovery. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Good morning, everyone. Um, hope everyone can hear me um, as Candice gets um, settled in there as well. I want to say a very warm welcome to everyone present. Um, Chairman um, our Danny Williams, uh, President um, of Sajiko Jamaica, um, Christopher Zaka, our esteemed trustees, pension clans, my fellow team members, uh, special invited guests, uh, a very warm welcome on behalf of, of me and my team. I'm very happy to be here. It's my first um, virtual seminar, and uh, I'm very delighted and honored to be here. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to take you through what I see as some of the opportunities and, and some of the things that we should be looking out for over 2021 and how, how we should be thinking about markets and risks um, going forward. So uh, Mark Cuban had a, a very good quote, which I thought would be useful to share. And in, in essence, um, the, the mantra is no, good crisis should go unwasted. So wherever there's change, whenever there is uncertainty, there's also opportunity. And part of our main job here at Sagicor is to ensure that we do look for opportunities despite all of the uncertainties that we've just gone through and ensure that we're, we're properly positioned to take advantage of these opportunities. So, in terms of our global macro themes, I've broken it out in, in, in three main time, time periods. So over the next three to six months from a global macro perspective, my expectations are that the US dollar as a, you know, the world's predominant um, currency and reserve currency is probably going to come under some bouts of weakness. And this would let, lead to 
more ease of financial conditions and how this should translate into equity market performance, both on, in, into US markets as well as in developed markets and emerging markets is that I would expect um, these markets to outperform developed markets. And we've seen that play out so far this year. Um, also over the next six to 12 months, um, both M Marla as well as Neil touched on this as well, monetary policy is going to be going to remain extremely accommodative. And when, once we've had, you know, the ECB, um, US Federal Reserve, um, Chair Powell, as well as other central bankers around the world commit to spending a, a significant amount of your balance sheet, which at the last check was about $31 trillion. So they have flooded the market with money to ensure that liquidity is abundant and we do not have any, un, any unintended um, consequences on the economic side as we now going through this extremely you know, unusual um, health crisis. So monetary conditions are going to remain fairly supported. Um, we have US um, policy rates at 25 basis points or 0.25%. And you can compare that to our own VOJ. And when you look at our own um, T-bill rates, uh, as, as Neil mentioned, just under 1%. So this is going to ensure that we don't have any, um, any tightening in financial conditions. Looking out further ahead, I expect we're, we're eco major economies are going to the developed economies. We'll have probably it's a, a period of synchronous growth and inflation, which we've not seen for the last three to five years, I would say. And this is going to be aided by, you know, rollout of vaccines. We have several vaccines on the market right now. And this is going to continue to aid a global GDP to recover uh, somewhere towards 5%. Jamaica within that vein will stand to benefit from this recovery in our global trading partners. And my expectation is that GDP this year is going to recover to the low mid single digit regions. And this is going to be supportive again for, for equity markets and financial assets. As historically, as periods where we've seen, looking back through history, where we've seen periods of, you know, this positive growth, growth and inflation delta has favored equities, commodities over bonds, and I've depicted that on the charts on the right. So looking through the full year, I do expect all asset markets to exhibit some positive inflationary dynamics. Um, countries will be slow to deliver in this, in this regard, with companies, though, using this rebound in economic activity to try and repair all of the damage that was done in 2020 and put their, put their companies and balance sheets on firmer footing. And again, finally, on liquidity, um, we want to remain, this is going to remain abundant. And uh, all this, again, this is going to translate in terms of how you should be thinking about an asset allocation um, policy is that you want to be predisposed to equities. You want to be short rates or short, you, you know, interest rate products as we believe interest rates as we go through this reflation um, episode. Thanks, thanks, Candice. So the, the chart on the right here really depicts um, how you should be thinking about your asset allocation policy over, over the next you know, six to 12 months. So again, the, 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 green, the green bar here shows that you want to be predisposed to equities. You want to be less exposed to treasuries. Within fixed income, we're not total bears, but we believe it should be more selective in this allocation. Um, as if we're in an inflationary environment, this is going to have a negative impact on yields and rates. And so you want to ensure that you mitigate um, this effect by not being overweight on um, fixed income instruments. And finally, you want to be positively disposed to commodities as well. And we've seen that start to play out. If you look at, I'm um, sure you've driven around and seen how much, how much gas prices have gone up. WTI is up 30% um, already um, over, over the course of the year, which anecdotally, if you recall one of the pages that Neil presented, um, our exposure to energy in one of our international funds had a negative was had a negative impact on that fund but it's already recovered so it's really you know again just to tie things back together it's really important that you know we we understand the risks that we're taking and we're we're ensuring that the, the risks are properly sized and and suitable relative to the conditions that we're seeing so it's a, it's a great testament to to the team um, um here maybe we could go to the next slide so trying to summarize the global markets um, for, for the next 12 months. So with looking at the US economy again, you know, the major, you know, largest economy in the world, we do expect a, a V-shaped rebound. 
we do expect you know, financial conditions to remain fairly, fairly stable. And one of the things which is going to drive this, I'd say there are two, there are two vaccines or, or two um, catalysts in the market right now. The first one, which is the vaccine, you know, we have several vaccines on the market right now. If you look at how major economies are rolling out a vaccine, um, UK has, you know, vaccinated about 20% of its population. The US is actually not far behind that. And what's most importantly here as well is that the US is now vaccinating more people than people getting infected. So I think once this um, trajectory continues, this will continue to add to what I call animal spirits and people will feel more confident about their, their health and, and safety, first of all, and they will feel more um, less nervous about making financial decisions. So how I think that will play out as economies start to reopen um, on the right in terms of equities, you know, expect S&P 500 to, to trade within a range of 3,800 to 4,200. And again, with the vaccine providing the sh third shot to stick, the third shot to markets. Um, and that is relative to the, the 3,900 we are now on, on, on S&P 500 as a, as a benchmark index. In China, which is the second largest economy, you know, China was the first country to go in to the economic crisis and it's first out China, if, if, you, if you actually look at the numbers, China didn't act, register a recession last year. They grew about 2%. And our expectation this year is that they will actually recover in the high mid single digit regions, about 8% 8, 8 thereabouts. So a very strong um, recovery in, in the Chinese economy. And you recall China being the second largest economy has major implications on global trade. And that will have a beneficial effect for its trading partners, both in Europe in, as well as the rest of emerging markets. Um, when it comes to trade, this, uh, this was a very co contentious issue on the, you know, the, um, the Trump administration. We don't think President Biden is going to take his foot off the gas on this, uh, on, in this area. We think that there's, um, there's been probably only area of support on both sides of the aisle in, in, the, in the US um, political arena, where both sides, the Republicans and the Democrats, believe that um, they need to be a little more firmer with, with China on trade and human rights and other, and other areas. So looking over to Europe, um, while initially my expectation that they potentially could have um, a double dip growth um, risk, um, but they've actually been doing a reasonably good job rolling out vaccines despite some earlier hiccups. Um, but again, when you look at the currencies, we expect Euro to remain fairly flattish um, on the year. And again, in terms of global po policy co coordination, the ECB, as well as the UK, BOE, we expect both of these major central bank bankers to continue to provide stimulus. The UK has done a lot. The European Central Bank has also done a lot. And again, this is ensuring that the, the, the economic engines receive the, the gas, so to speak, that it needs to, to, to continue to, to recover. How this will pay out for emerging markets, as I mentioned earlier, we think that this is going to have a positive impact on emerging market economies. We hopefully should see some of a, a, a V-shaped recovery here. Um, and I think this is likely to play out um, favoring North, North Asian economies um, as the primary beneficiaries of uh, the Chinese recovery. Um, but we don't expect any, any major inflation scares um, coming out of emerging markets, which has typically been a, a major concern as EM economies grow the next thing to worry about, of course, is inflation and would they be able to contain inflation. So we think EM economies will remain pretty benign. And this is a, a good backdrop for credit spreads in EM. So I think, um, again, uh, Marla had touched on how, how spreads had tightened um, and behaved over the past year, looking at Jamaica rel relative to the MB spreads. And we believe that looking forward, we believe EM spreads will tighten against this backdrop of recovering growth, no inflation, massive possible, massive um, policy stimulus, I think these are, are good factors that will drive spreads tighter. And again, this should, should play out favorably for the Jamaican economy as well, as beneficiaries of the, um, of the factors I just mentioned. Um, the economy I see having a, a rebound relative to the US economy, um, the dollar, which has been you know, you know, depreciating so far this year, we think is probably gonna remain within this range. So with, we're factoring a, a mild depreciation this year. Of course, there will be extremes with, you know, there will be bouts of volatility and it could, you know, exceed the lower and upper end of our trading band. 
but we believe generally that we're going to experience a mild devaluation, mild depreciation as the economy, um, you know, gets some headwinds from the, the delays in, in reopening the economy. And that's offset by local consumption. So maybe we go to the, the next chart, please. So what I thought I'd just share is, you know, again, being a, you know, a country that, you know, tourism is our number one foreign exchange earner after remittance flows. The chart on the left actually shows, this is, this is TSA checkpoint travel um, frequency. And this is just looking at domestic travel. So you can see back in March, kind of pre-pandemic, um, number of people going through the TSA checkpoints, which I, I know we all love to loathe, um, was just over 2 million per day. And when the pandemic hit, that dropped to virtually zero, as you can see from the lower left-hand side of the chart. And as the economies have started to reopen, um, people have gotten a little more, you know, the restrictions or work from home restrictions or stay shelter in place restrictions have been gradually lifted. People have gotten a little more confident to travel, but you can see it has nowhere near um, the pre-pandemic levels of just over 2 million people going through TSA checkpoints. And as a direct result of all of the stimulus checks that have the US government has spent, sent out, you can see when you look at personal incomes, the chart on the right, so people's incomes have actually, on, on an aggregate basis, there's certainly a lot of deviation within here. But when you look at personal incomes, personal incomes have actually recovered close to pre-pandemic levels. And again, as we do have this third stimulus um, initiative um, being, um, being prepared by uh, President Biden, we believe this will continue to support the US consumer uh, as that is a, the, the, you know, the dominant driver for the US economy you know, accounting for over 66% of, of the US um, GDP. So this, we believe, is, is somewhat of an encouraging factor. We could um, move to the next page, please. So what I wanted to spend a, a few minutes on here is that uh, as we've communicated and corresponded with you over, over the course of the past couple of weeks, um, we took a strategic decision to um, dispose of our, our, our share in Playa um, given what we believed was uh, the, the right time with the uncertainty in, in tourism and the extent of the recovery, as well as also exposure to the sector in, in, in other risk buckets, we believe it was a prudent move to, to, to dispose of our shares that allowed us to receive a net inflow of about $96 million. Um, but those proceeds um, will be redeployed into real estate opportunities, which we'll, we'll go into in, in a few pages next. So our, our, our outlook and our direction on real estate remains really to, to go back to investing in traditional brick and mortar assets. Um, we want to, you know, move away from our de-emphasized investment in indirect real estate assets through equity securities and really focus on, the, you know, the bread and butter of real estate investing, which focuses on investing in residential commercial tourism opportunities, as well as a, a new burgeoning warehousing sector. And our target here is that we want to invest in properties that will have a ROI of greater than 20% and annual yields or cash flow yields of about 8% 8, 8 or better. How do we see the, the pipeline of opportunities? Well, we see a very robust pipeline. Um, again, we, just what the, the deals that we've screened so far, there are several more deals that we've looked at but, but passed on. Um, we have over seven deals in, in, in the pipeline right now, totaling over $86 billion in, in potential investments. And this is mainly within the commercial sector. So the chart on the right shows that 58% of these opportunities that we're looking at um, are within the commercial space. Um, and then it's really evenly distributed across residential um, tourism as well as warehousing opportunities. So we we'll, we'll, we'll feel fairly bullish um, on the real estate sector. Um, it's actually, when you look at our economic component, the sector components, it's one of the areas in the economy that has been fairly resilient. And we do see some opportunities to buy assets at, at fairly attractive levels um, over the next um, three to six months. So we'll be keeping um, the, the team updated um, on, on these developments. In terms of where we're also looking at new opportunities, again, we're coming out, so coming into 2021 after having a, you know, a really, you know, remarkable unforeseen 2020. 
Um, we believe one of the things that we need to be looking at are uncorrelated assets, assets that do provide higher yield, but do not have the, liquid, some, the, the volatility associated with it. And we believe that this, this asset class, uh, our alternative investments, is one of the, the, the asset classes that we should be looking at as a strategic allocation to, for, for our clients. And again, this should be sized appropriately relative to uh, a, a full asset allocation um, model. Um, but we believe that this is um, very suitable for pension funds who have the, the visibility and the, the appetite to hold these assets over the long run, which is why private equity and debt is well suited for pension clients. It will certainly enhance um, the fund returns, um, especially when you can it on a risk adjusted basis. And most importantly, provide some diversification relative to public markets that uh, we believe that um, both equity and debt um, private markets do provide. And here are the returns. So when we look historically, we're seeing returns on, on returns to equity be about double digits. So between 10 to 25% and on debt between eight to 10%. The other area that we're looking at strategically is within the lease financing space. So you can imagine companies as have been ramping up, for, for instance, buying technology, buying equipment for their companies and to provide for their employees. So we're looking at a potential opportunities to provide lease financing to companies, whether it's for hardware, for their software needs, or, for, or even their, their real estate needs as well. As this, again, it's a diversified asset. It's a lower correlated asset class to public markets. It's a diversifier, and we believe it provides um, reasonable, you know, risk-adjusted returns over the medium term, um, less than on the private private debt and equity side, mid to single, mid to high single digits. So you're looking at between five to eight percent. And again, when you look at it relative to its volatility lower risk adjusted returns relative to public, other public and private markets. So we'll be looking for opportunities within the lease space, lease financing space. And also um, what we're looking at doing is very targeted um, opportunities to, to invest in the government GOJ related securities. Um, one of the things as have been mentioned earlier, the government has been very prudent managing its, its debt and, and, and deficit levels and while it may not be the, 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 the magnitude of supply hitting the markets as it had been historically, we believe that when they do come to market, we'll be working with them very closely um, to be one of the, the beneficiaries of, of, of these instruments when they do come to issue it. Looking ahead, I think it's important to just you know, reground ourselves. Um, we are investing for the long term. We're investing to ensure that you know our, our, our clients, our pensioners have a, have some you know have the, the savings that they need in order to enjoy um, their retirement. And in order for us to do this, we really have to ensure that we we continuously um, do a combination of you know top down uh, macro analysis and fundamental analysis, and marry that with a bottom up you know stock selection and bond selection to ensure that we're identifying the right assets to fit the investment horizon and landscape that, that we, that we um, identify and ensure that these securities are meeting the objectives for our, for our, our pension, our, our pool funds, and look out continuously to integrate new opportunities and ensure that these are communicated uh, and, and, and related to our clients in, in a timely manner. And especially during these very you know, volatile times, want to ensure that we're, we're keeping our clients apprised of, of conditions as, as we see them you know, on, a, on a timely basis. So looking ahead, I think it's important to, to again, to remain focused, to remain measured, to remain, you know, have our constructive and you know, re repeatable approach to markets. What we don't want to be doing and what our team has done a very good job of is classically what you see on the, the, the graph on the, on the left-hand side is buying into the market at the top. So you can see the imperial to euphoria and market is, is really getting ahead of itself and has really worked up a good head of steam. That's not when we want to be buying. We want to be selling into those markets and really looking at opportunities on the, on the right side of this chart where there's a lot of concern, a lot of anxiety, a, a lot of you know, un, you know, 
you know, just, you know, pure, I won't say panic in the markets or blood in the streets is how, how, it, how it's typically phrased. That's when we want to be buying assets. And that's where we are now coming out of, coming out of this um, global health and economic crisis. And that's where we can add a long-term value for, for our clients um, looking ahead. And why is that important? Well, look at, you know, this chart here depicts the growth of your of an investment that if you made in 1996 through various, through various periods of market turmoil. So you can say, despite the, the crisis in the late 90s, um, the, the recession in uh, the Lehman, Bear Stearns financial crisis in 08, that was combined with the JDX exchange, um, two JDX exchanges, that investment was able to weather both, all of these financial storms and had, has grown to, would have grown to 34 million over this time period relative to seven and a half million that you'd have received um, had you just met, matched inflation over the same time period. So again, after we remain focused, our time horizon is very long-term. We want to ensure that our portfolios are constructed against this backdrop so that we can continue to deliver the returns that um, our, our pensioners um, require for their retirement. And with that, I'd like to thank you. It's been my a pleasure to be here today. I hope to be back here um, updating you on market and economic events um, frequently over the course of the year, as well as with the other members of the team, um, Neil, Candice, and, and Robert, who you, you know very well. Um, I'm looking forward to, to working with you through 2021. Thanks. So Thank you so much, Sean, Candice, Neil. Thank you. We appreciate that very concise uh, uh, presentation. Uh, there was so much uh, that, so much more rather, that could have been said, but we really tried to uh, get it down for you. Neil, you should stay on this side and Candice on this side. And then if there are any questions, then you both can come onto the stage. Uh, Sean, Neil, and Candice, you know, you're not seeing right now, but there's lots of applause going up for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But we're not done yet. I don't want you to think that we're finished because one, please, if you have any questions at all, please uh, type them into the chat and we'll pose those questions to our investment team. Later on, we have a little fireside chat, not later on, coming up next, actually. We have a little fireside chat with Sean, LaToya, and Neil. I know LaToya is somebody that you all see very regularly, um, and she's always behind the scenes, but today she's gonna make an appearance on the talk show set. Remember, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat so that we can ask our team to answer those questions for you. Okay, so I see a, a question coming in, in here. So Candice and Neil, if you could come on stage, please, just to make another correction. And we'll make this correction before we send out uh, the slides to you. Um, there is a slide that was in the presentation that had a B where there should have been an M besides some US dollars. So it's US 86 million and not US 86 billion. But we'll make sure that that correction is done before. Candice and Neil, could you come? Uh, not too close, physically distant, thanks. <laughs> All right, so I have a question here from Dennis uh, Chung, and you, you all can let me know um, who will take this question. Uh, based on the outlook, I would like to understand what the specific projections are for the PIF in terms of percentage return for 2021 and the returns expected for the various sectors in the PIF. Um, there are... There are some other questions. Sean, Neil? Uh, Sean. Sean. Oh, I love how they all, Sean, Sean, that's, yeah, Sean, Sean. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Sean, just a second, you're not, we're not hearing you right now, so we're just gonna ask, we're, we're, I, I'm not sure if you're muted, but we'll unmute you so you can yeah. speak. Can, yeah, go ahead, we can hear you now. Thanks, Ali. Um, thanks for the question, Dennis. Uh, this, um, it, a good question. You know, it's, it's certainly hard to predict the terms. And you know, when you look at the, the start of the main index, so the main index ended the year negative territory about 23 percent last year, and so far it has recovered about three four percent of that. We had it bounce from from November low 
So with, with the full year, we can expect. All right, Sean, I'm going to interrupt you because there is some some kind of uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. or, I don't know if it's feedback or there's 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 some kind of alteration or something with, with your audio right now. We're going to try and get that sorted. But also to, to say, there are some persons who have been saying that the slides look blurry to them. Um, I just want to point out, if you go to speaker view, that should be OK. That should be the fix. That's been the fix for a few other persons this morning. So please try that, because there are some people who are seeing clearly and some people who are not, um, a few persons who are not. Go to speaker view and let us try that way. Also remember that we will have a recording of this. And also, if you could also check to see that you're as close to your modem as possible if you're at work and there is an issue still, call IT. They love to hear from us in, during these times. <laughs> uh, let's try Sean again with that, the answer to that question just to reiterate what the question was. Based on the outlook, I would like to understand what the specific projections are for the PIF in terms of percentage return for 2021 and the returns expected for the various sectors in the PIF. That's from Dennis Chung. Hi, Dennis. Hey, thanks again. Hopefully, you guys can get a bit clearer. Still hearing a little feedback, but I'm going to try and keep it as best as possible. So, our broad equities, we're targeting our work um, to size with returns. We're still very conservative in our outlook for the year as we're still going through uh, an extended period of you know, shelter in place uh, and lockdown for the government. Um, is dealing with you know, the, the rapid like, increase in cases. So we think this is going to have a dynamic on equity, especially with our external vendors. So, hardly so the market has two halves. We expect some of a mild half in the first half of the year, and probably a little bit from a week back half of the year. And again, uh, we have a very excellent expectation for this year as continuing to assess and analyze conditions. But I think broadly, we're pensioning from taking the highest really levels on equities. Um, again, going back to all you on with, um, given the level of upgrade, you're not expecting um, a lot of return from instruments, which is why we're, we're recommending not being overexposed to instruments. Um, I think we'll do a um, So on, on fixed income, we're expecting very, very little outlook here on equity I assume be, uh, for the year. But again, we continue to assess conditions and make our vision. All right. All right, thank you very much, Sean. And thank you again, Dennis, for that question. Um, I, I am seeing some feedback in the chat. Um, as well, I, I, I'm hearing a lot of, or I'm seeing a lot of good presentation and teamwork. Um, congratulations to you both and to Sean as well. Uh, there is another question from Ruth from TPDCO. We are increasing our investment into commercial real estate. Is this risky when more companies are moving away from brick and mortar to online? I, I, I'm not seeing Sean right now. Uh, am I to wait on? Oh. There you are, you're back. Thank you. <laughs> and I, and when, when Neil and Candice say, Sean, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sean. No. <laughs> no, thanks. Thanks for the question. So, again, we've been very targeted and measured in our real estate um, strategy. Our view on the first real estate is that we have to adapt to you know, the current conditions where companies are in um, different types of space for their employees. Some companies are downsizing, others are actually using the disruption in the market to expand the business. So we are, we are fundamentally aligning on commercial real estate investments for the industry. All right. So Sean, one more time, we have to, <laughs> we have to, we have to stop you one more time. And although we like to see you, can you try doing audio only for us? And let's see if that works a little bit better because this is a very important question that has been asked. Dennis, your question was important too. Um, and so, somehow the sound is not very clear for everyone. Um, so we're going to try to get the answer to that question correctly, okay? Um, Sean, you may go ahead now. Let's see if that works. 
Thanks, Ali. Um, hopefully, feedback is not as good. So, within commercial real estate, we're taking a very no. We're still we're still having this. So we're going to take that question a little bit. Can we, can we, let's do this. Let's try and fix that audio issue. And because you'll be back with us for our fireside chat, we'll try and have that uh, conversation. And I know there are many persons, and uh, somebody, somebody actually said, you're doing a good job hosting. Thanks. While, <laughs> while I'm hosting, though, I can't, if I could get uh, correctly the information, if you could, from my tech team, if you could put that into just type it in and send it to me via WhatsApp. I multitask pretty well, so you can definitely share with me your comments, your feedback, so that I can share with our audience what it is that we are saying. Alicia? Yes. Oh, is that my boss, Mr. Zaka? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are yes. you? Maybe I could jump in if short. Yes! I didn't know you. Yes, go ahead, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great question because clearly traditional brick and mortar um, office types, building New Kingston offices, etc., um, currently are not flavor of the day. And we, our, our commercial real estate strategy, from what I have heard from Sean and his team, is targeted. It's targeted to sectors that have growth opportunities. So he spoke of warehousing. Um, there is definitely demand for professional office space, such as medical, legal, etc. So it's targeted, and clearly we would not be building a brand new office building to house, say, a corporation at this point. Um, however, if we got an opportunity to buy something that's mature, that has a long-term tenant, such as an established bank with a good return, then we would look at that. But it is a targeted commercial real estate strategy to buy, to develop and buy, um, develop, into, you know, um, income earning mature properties, all manner of commercial real estate. All right, thank you so much, sir. Um, I, and uh, I'm not sure if you heard the other question that was asked before. Are there any further questions in the chat? Remember to type them in so that you can so that you can get our team to answer. We're, we're here, we're willing. We haven't met like this, I can't believe. We missed out an entire year. All right, Derek Jones uh, has a question. Given the complexity of the world today, what has Sajikor done to reinforce its analytical capabilities? If I, if I can. All right, Sean, you're going to try again? I'll interrupt you. It's not because I'm being rude, I swear. <laughs> we just want to get the sound correct. So try again, and then we'll see. If not, we'll ask someone else to answer. It's a great question. So I think our, our focus has been around people and our processes. And our people, we're actively recruiting to, to beat up our research capabilities, we want to ensure that we have world-class talent that will be able to do the fundamental work that we need to determine suitable investments for all our, our portfolios and all our strategies. So that's something um, we're actively in the market. So if anyone who would like to find our research team, please uh, you know, send their, the, that, the job posting is on Sajikor's website. So please have them apply as we continue to be resources in that area. Uh, on, the, on the risk side as well, there are efforts on the way there to ensure that we have the, all of the reporting tools that we need. And on the system side, we're, we're again, constantly in the, in, the, in the process of evaluating our current system capabilities to ensure that they are sufficient and suitable to meet our investment needs um, for the next several years. So um, this is something that is always in a constant state of evaluation and will change if necessary. If we can find more sophisticated tools to support our investment decisions. All right, thank you very much, Sean. There is another question. Given the complexity of the wor world, yeah, no, that's a question I just asked. I, I do apologize. Are you, pricing in are you pricing in further decline in real estate performance? I don't know if uh, Chris Zaka wants to take that one. He had answered the real estate question prior. Or Sean, if you want to take that, your audio is better. Blink. I can oh, go ahead. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Ali. 
with regards to our real estate portfolio, but we have seen most of the volatility um, passed in 2020. So looking out in 2021, we do not expect the same level of volatility to impact the portfolios in a negative manner. As I had referred earlier, we're moving away from equity-linked real estate investment, traditional brick and mortar investment opportunities that have steady income, steady cash flow, and will not have the, the level of volatility that we saw in earlier in earlier periods. So um, that, that's that's our that's our focus and that's our outlook for real estate. All right, so I'm seeing a couple of questions here about Playa. How were the Playa investments doing? Can't remember it was that, that it was addressed. Were the Playa shares sold at a loss? I too want to hear about the performance of the Playa shares. It was mentioned in the presentation, and I think just for kind of a wholesome kind of look-see, maybe I don't know if we can go back to those slides, or Sean, if you want to just speak to it in kind of a general sense, so that persons who did not hear what you said before can refer back? Sure. So we did receive net proceeds of 96 million from our sale of our buyer position. We did incur a loss on the sale given our entry point in the, in the, in the stock. But again, looking, at, looking forward to what we see as opportunities in real estate, we've already highlighted $86 million of potential investments that we believe would be well suited for, for our clients. All right, thank um, you. I have something to add. Sure, go ahead, sir. Um, yeah, the exposure of the PIF and other pension funds to, to prior to that sale of the shares would have centered around two, two aspects of assets. And one is um, their investment of the various equity funds in the X fund shares. And that has not declined since this year, so there was no loss as a result of that sale. And secondly, the Sigma real estate fund um, had direct exposure to the player shares, but in fact, um, the, the sale took place at or around um, what the book value was on the Sigma fund, so there was margin, very minimal impact on the Sigma fund investment. I think what Sean was referring to would have been more of an impact on our balance sheet at X funds and our balance sheet at Sadikor Group. Um, but that sale did not significantly impact the pension funds um, in either of the respects that I spoke of. And therefore, um, what we have now is a lot of money that we're investing short term to get returns, very safely investing US dollars. And of course, you heard about the pipeline of projects that will over time start to bring back real strong, steady brick and mortar cash flow um, to the pension funds. All right, thank you very much, Chris Zaka, uh, President and CEO of Sagicor Group Jamaica. Um, I think, I think this, th those were all the questions. I don't see any more coming uh, into me. I do have uh, a note from the members of the Maritime Authority team who were off for a while as our building did a fire drill and we all had to vacate our building for about 45 minutes. We're sorry about that. I know you didn't want to miss such a critical portion of the seminar. All right. Uh, there is another question. Our individual pension statements showed significant losses for 2020. Have we started to recoup those losses as yet? Okay, <laughs> step into the video light, Neil. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so the, the person said that the statement shows significant loss. All right, so I, I don't even want to use the word loss. It's really, well, a reduction in value. Um, you don't realize the losses until you actually um, leave the fund uh, and then cash those funds, right? So once you hold the assets, um, the re and this, we say the, the recovery has been imminent, you, you will recover and make back that money. Um, up to actually last quarter last year, the recovery has actually started. And a lot of the funds have shown improvement. 
um, in the latter quarter of last year. So the recovery has already started for many other clients um, and all the funds actually. So the answer is yes, the recovery has started and we expect it to continue in 2021. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, Kat. <laughs> thank you, Candice. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate you. Uh, when we come back, you, I, because you know you feel like you're watching TV, when we come back, we have our fireside chat with uh, Latoya Mayhukar. Neil will be back. Uh, Sean will be back as well. And we'll just have a little conversation. Your questions are welcome during that period as well. I'll be asking some questions. Um, of our team and as we continue this seminar with such rich information. But we did say that we have a surprise for you, right? So normally you're with us, we get to have coffee and tea and crumpets together and we get to kick off with like a pinky finger and all these kinds of things. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that this year. However, we have uh, decided to share with you a gift certificate, those of you who registered, a gift certificate to Starbucks, wherever you are. They have, they're the company that can offer us digital gift certificates. So you'll be receiving digital gift certificates so you can have coffee on us. Hopefully next year you'll be able to have rice and peas and chicken and gravy and salad and coffee and tea. We can all eat together. Unfortunately, we can't do that this year. So look out for your gift certificate if you registered for the seminar via email. Thank you so much. And so let us, let us go with our videos and then we'll be back with our presentation. Also, I do not want you to leave because we also have some entertainment coming up a little bit later on. Jamaican people don't like to talk about money. As a culture, we just don't like it. Because if you go to dinner table to talk about money, a bad manners. Why is it that it's important for us to share these stories so that people know how to deal with money? Because you don't learn that in school, you have a lot of people making mistakes throughout their life that if they had just, if someone had just sit them down and just explained some basic rules to them, yeah. it would have saved them a lot of time, stress, mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Life happens. Ups and downs, valleys and mountaintops. Tragedy, joy, loss, hope. One thing to remember, whether good or bad, is that things can change. Retirement is a big decision. Leaving your job means more freedom to enjoy other things in life. However, with this freedom comes responsibility. It is important to ensure you retire at the right time and manage your money and spending to make sure you don't run out of money. Let's look at some of the common mistakes people make and how you can avoid them. Excessive spending. On retirement, some people feel it's time to reward themselves after years of hard work. This could result in overspending. How to fix it? Create a budget. Stick to it and find affordable ways to pursue a balanced lifestyle. Underestimating medical expenses. As you age, it is inevitable that you will encounter health issues. How to fix it? Make adequate allowance in your budget for future medical expenses and adopt a healthy lifestyle early. Retiring with too much debt. Retiring with too much debt will drain the resources you will need to enjoy your retirement comfortably. How to fix it? Repay as much debt as you can while working. Try to pay off your mortgage. Not retiring early gives you additional time to pay off debt. Retiring too early. Although most people dream of early retirement, it is important to calculate if you would be financially able to afford to do so. How to fix it? Keep working as long as you can to maximize your savings. This could make all the difference between comfortable retirement and one which you have more free time but very little money. Putting savings in the wrong place. Fear of taking investment risks may cause many persons to be too conservative. They end up putting money in accounts with low returns. Hence, their money loses value over time due to inflation. 
On the other hand, some people make risky investments in search of higher returns. This could lead to big losses. How to fix it? Seek advice from a financial expert as you assess your risk tolerance and determine what investment options work best for you. Planning for retirement during your 20s or 30s gives you the opportunity to plan properly and save more over time, allowing you to overcome any unexpected setbacks. The longer you wait to begin saving for retirement, the more difficult it becomes to achieve your goals. When planning for retirement, there are three main sources of income that you need to consider. One, an employer-sponsored pension fund. This is an approved pension plan offered by an employer for its employees. Through this arrangement, you are allowed to contribute not more than 20% of your chargeable income, nor more than 20% of your emoluments, inclusive of the employer's contribution, if any. 2. State Pension through the National Insurance Scheme NIS. These are small payments made by the government that are determined by your contributions made while employed. It also includes other benefits that can assist you during retirement, including the NI Gold Health Plan. And three, personal investments. Consider investing a portion of your annual disposable income on a regular basis. The earlier you invest and the more you save, the more comfortably you will retire. Click the link in the left-hand corner for more details. All right, thank you so much. Th All right, thank you so much uh, for sticking and staying with us. As I promised, we have a fireside chat, AKA panel discussion, but I mean, we can't, can't call it that anymore. Look how, look how far we reach. <laughs> I am joined by uh, Neil Kellyman. I'm joined by Sean Newman, and I'm joined by Latoya the Great. Sorry, gentlemen, I'm not calling you the Great because you know Latoya is greater. Can I have agreement on that? Agreed. Agreed. Sean, is that an agreement from you? Thumbs up. Because all right, great. Did you hear that, Latoya? I'm happy with that. <laughs> and everybody is happy and thanks you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for our Starbucks gift certificates. Great, great. All right, fantastic. So how has the year been for you? 2020, we, I mean, 2021 hasn't started much better necessarily than 2020 in our minds because we're all waiting for 2020 to finish. Want it gone, gone. How was 2020 for you? I'll start, ladies before, ladies before gentlemen. Latoya, what was it like for you? Well, it was initial shock and awe, you know, in the changes that had come about in our personal lives, our professional lives, absolutely everything, the way we deal with our clients. But then you, you roll with it, you know, you, you find ways to adjust and did that very quickly. The homeschooling is still a shock, but um, we're, doing, we're doing good. We're doing good. Right. It, I, for me, the homeschooling is still a shock as well. I don't think I'll ever get over the fact that teachers are great. And I didn't realize it all growing up. I didn't realize how amazing my teachers were. And especially when they have to deal with my children. Sean, is that the same for you? You're Maybe muted. Un understated. Understated, yeah. Neil, you feel the same way? Same way, same way. I still have a little one um, doing online right now. And well, she's not that little, but yeah. Yeah, uh, and spoken like a true father. <laughs> The adjustment was, you know, one to get used to, um, but I think she's there now. You know, she went through the stages of um, probably slight depression, can't see her friends and all that, but she has gotten over it to the point where I think she actually enjoys work, um, school, home right. school now. So, right. yeah, we've, we've been through that roller coaster. Right? Okay, so 2020 was the year that COVID brought, uh, or the, the, the COVID brought, yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Um, what was our response, you think, Latoya? How was that for you? I mean, you, you, you're, you're somebody who likes to see and touch your clients and see them all the time. What was, what was it like? Well, we never missed a beat. Yeah. We got out there in terms of using the virtual technologies that are available. And we are able to meet with all of them virtually, all of them, maybe one or two we didn't meet for the whole year. But the main thing which you know, stood out to us was the resilience of our clients. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding the, 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 the blow 
of a COVID and you know what it has caused, not one plan wound up because of COVID in 2020, not one to date. And that is tremendous. And it is really a testament to the, 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 the trustees and the quality of the leadership that they are they're um, doing. And of course, our help, you know, in keeping them stable. Our admin and actuarial teams met with the clients, those that were especially vulnerable because of the immediate impact that would have happened, you know, the industries. Right. And kind of help them to walk through how to manage some of those challenges. So we're very happy for that. And they all stuck it out. We're very happy that our plans are all in place. And we really have to give kudos to the trustees and, you know, real unsung heroes in this, in this crisis. You, you made mention uh, when we were talking about the fact that some of, our, some of our trustees represent companies and industries that were severely affected yeah. by the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. What, what, was that, what were those conversations like or what would you share or with them and what's that kind of advice that you were giving at that time? Well, it depends on the type of plan that they had, yeah. where they may have had some amount of flexibility in terms of the funding of those plans or actually Corrine would have met with those clients to say, you know, maybe you could continue at the rate that you're contributing now or reduce the rate because you have a surplus and all of those conversations. That's for DB type plans. Mm -hmm. The DC plans are less flexible, but everybody kind of dug in their heels and decided that the plan was a priority and that the financial future of their members was a priority. And just to add that on our side, we really try to be sensitive to our, all our, um, the members and the pensioners. So for example, with the pensioners, we started to pay them earlier than normal. So they would get their- Oh, that's go, great. Yeah, you go straight pay to the bank pension accounts. pension earlier, that's always a good thing. Yeah. Right, but right? Would, right, thumbs up. Get it by the 20th <laughs> of the month, the latest, ensure that they're not caught in the month and hustle and bustle because we don't want them to be exposed. You know, We don't want to keep them safe. That's just one of the things, just an idea. But all our clients, those that were not using the online channels before, the others jumped on board. We started to use the online channels for the contributions. And you know, all the refunds are going to bank accounts. It's been really great transitioning. And I, what really I loved was that the clients did not hesitate in jumping on to the Zoom and the Teams to have those meetings to continue the business of the trust. And that is really commendable. Right, so is there any special, uh, I, I wanna say pitch that you would like to give to anyone who's not utilizing electronic channels right now? Or, or do we have 100% compliance where that is concerned? For the, for the I know we've payments, been, yes. we didn't know about COVID when we started to introduce this, but right. it, so it turns out. That's right. So it's really something which would have pre-existed, which we're trying to onboard everybody into using. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, utilize your MySagicore. We're, we're, we have some things coming up, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but we're, we're very excited about where we can go and the value that we can unlock for our members and our trustees this year. Okay, are there any other 2020 initiatives that will kind of roll over into 2021 uh, that you care to share? Sure, so I could talk about the Massage Core app here. So how it, this all started is one of our trustees, Derek Jones, one long serving trustee from Cape Hello, Island. hello Derek. <laughs> I was supposed to say hello to you earlier, Mr. Derek Jones of Cable and Wireless and DNG. DNG. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. Right. Good morning. So Chairman Jones gave us this challenge to say, you know, Latoya, why don't you have an app? Get an app. And so since November of 2020, we actually put the app in the app store. So it's now in the, in the Google and the I, I, iPhone app stores mm -hmm. and it's available. So we're actually, we pilot tested within Sajikor. As you know, we have to dance at home before we dance abroad, right? So don't, we want to, don't we know it? <laughs> <laughs> we have to work out all those kinks and make sure that we have a smooth experience because we don't want it to just be another app. We want it to be real. It's now in the palm of the members' hands to look at what their savings are, their, you know, look at where they can do, what they can do with this money, what they want to do with this money, how they can maximize those contributions. They can look at their beneficiaries. They can do certain transactions. So we want to make it real for them. So we spend some time to figure out how do we make sure that when a member gets this, that they'll actually act on it. So we've worked out all of that now, so we're gonna be coming to you um, with that. So it's in the App Store, My Space Sagicore Space App. So if you wanna check it out in the meantime, you can do so. Um, we welcome that, but right. we will be coming to you systematically. Uh, Philip and the team will be coming to roll that out to you and Marlene and Bridget. Okay, I have a message for you from Derek. Latoya is a star. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Thank Having you, dealt Mr. with George. her for many years and hope to do so for a long time to come. Nice, nice. I, I just and, then, to... and then Gillian agrees, oh. Judith agrees, 
Helen agrees. The app is finally a reality, says Helen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In terms of, in, 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 I know that we have the, the, the My Sajakor app. How do, you, how do you plan? It's such an uncertain time, generally. And I'll ask you this question as well, Sean and Neil. It's such a generally, such, so, such an uncertain time. How do we propose to deal with our clients um, on a regular basis? I say our, by the way. If you don't know me, I work at Sajakor as well. <laughs> so how do we plan to do that over the 2021 period and, in, and going forward? Well, we're going to be very flexible. So we're going to continue to meet online uh, as much as we can and, you know, within protocols and all of that, if we have to do face to face. And it's pretty much continuing to keep that contact and being in touch. Right. Right. I just want to say one more thing, though. One more thing, which I think is really it's amazing. It's your show, honey. Oh, I'm just the host. Go ahead. <laughs> The, you know, we've been on a campaign about the bond contributions for a while, right? Mm -hmm. We've been tracking this. Now, when we saw COVID, you know, Lakrisha and I and Shami were like holding our breath and Leonie, oh my God, you know, we're expecting people to stop contributing or to, you know, reduce that. But what we saw was that the bond contributions went up slightly. But what was amazing was that more people started to pay the maximum bond contributions. So the, the, max, the bond contributions are at 47%. But the maximum went to about 27%, about 25% last year. So that is significant, um, trustees. I really want to thank you for your, your, your guidance and your stewardship in helping members to keep their benefits intact, recognize the value of what they have and the importance of continuing to put those monies away. So I really want to, you know, big up my trustees for that. Big up, big up yourselves. <laughs> Clap yourselves. Can I have a round of applause for you? Yeah. Thank you, Annette, for clapping yourself. And Jillian Crosskill, I love that backdrop, Jillian. It's nice, that brick, brick motif thing there. It's hot. I love in that. Yeah. Jillian is our Cedric, one of our Cedric, are you clapping yourself? <laughs> Mr. Taylor, you clapping? Mr. Taylor, not pay me no man. Mr. Taylor, not pay me no man. Anyway. All right, Sean. Oh, we're, we're applauding in the chat. Is that what you were doing? <laughs> Mr. Taylor, yes, <laughs> we're applauding in the chat. Okay, Sean, you, you did touch on some of this um, in, in your presentation. However, 2020 was such an unprecedented year. It was, I, I mean, if I was an economist, thank you, Jesus, I'm not. But if I was in, in any way uh, dealing with numbers and that kind of thing, I would have had a mild panic attack. <laughs> did you? Mute. Mute. You sure. know, I'm lost for words sometimes just thinking about how yeah, I saw this train coming down the track. You know, I've been seeing it, you know, seeing the, the pandemic evolve in China and then as it steadily grew from uh, migrated from Asia to Europe to the US and of course to the Caribbean, it was like, you know, it was like a Hollywood movie. like this cannot be happening. It was mm -hmm. just unreal. And markets did not take that too kindly. So, you know, it was one of those, you know, all hands on deck moments where you ensure that everybody on your team is, is plugged in and connected and, first of all, safe, um, but ready to, to react and to, to adjust and manage their, their portfolios and funds um, during this unprecedented time. All right, Sean, one of the things that you and I have spoken about in the past is you, you and you're, also, you're, all, you're usually an optimistic person, and you said with every crisis comes an opportunity. I want you to talk a little bit about the opportunities that you see with this, I, I mean, prevailing crisis. No, thanks, Ali. So within this crisis, right, we've, if you look back over the past six to 12 months, no one would have thought would be be able to have this type of seminar. Um, so again, it shows the, the shift that people are, are, are able to make to technology. Um, 60, 12 months ago, there was no such thing as food delivery. So, uh, right now, in five or six companies which are doing food delivery, um, whether it's, it's gone from you know a, a build out of a courier service to a full-blown app-enabled ability for, for companies to capitalize on this work from home our shelter in place um, initiative that, that, has, that we're all adapting and 
transitioning towards. So I think it is, again, another great opportunity for businesses that were um, over, were more focused on U.S. markets or international markets to try and solve or serve your domestic and Jamaican consumer. As we've seen, you know, driving around, you know, there's still a lot of activity going on in the island. And there are companies that are well positioned to capitalize and benefit from the, the consumption of services and goods um, here, here within the island. So I think what we are looking forward to is being able to connect businesses which are doing that transition and pivoting from external markets to domestic markets, building out supply chains, doing some vertical um, level of integration within their business models and provide solutions to, to, to companies and, and, and households here. So that is the opportunity within this crisis that we're constantly working on with our, with our team to ensure that we can bring capital to the idea and to the solution. All right, thank you, Sean. There are, we, I, I did say this earlier in a previous segment. However, if you have a question, I, I see a couple here, but if you have a question that you'd like us to answer, you can also type it into the chat. Remember, I'm seeing that. I'm also seeing the applause for, for Latoya and for Neil and for, for Sean every time they speak. They applaud you for, for teaching your daughter at home. <laughs> You're doing a good job, even though it feels like it's terrible, terrible. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, question, right. a question is, what has been the year over year? That's from Randy Jones. Um, uh, Randy, if you, oh, Randy wants to. What has been the year over year? You know, Randy, you read my mind because I was going to ask you to please be more specific. Thank you for being so intuitive, sir. What has been the year over year change in benefits volume claims given the pandemic? Um, I don't know if either of you have. Um, strangely enough, it has not exceeded 2019. So the 2020 numbers for benefit requests has not exceeded 2019. We thought we would have seen a huge spike, but it has not. OK, yeah. thank you. And Neil, welcome. Uh, Sean, I didn't say welcome to Sajakor officially on this forum with all the, the clients. Welcome to Sajakor, Sean, and Neil. Um, they're the newest victims to Sajakor <laughs> crazy. Um, <laughs> so, Neil, you, you, you have mandated, so to speak, that one of the things that will have to increase over the next year, you, you started last year in 2020, but communication is big for you. Tell us why. Okay. Um, thanks, Al thanks, Ali. Um, communication, I mean, this time, very, very important. Um, I just want to make a plea to trustees, just make sure for 2021, you, you slot us in your diary at least three times for the year. You know, we really want to meet with you often, keep you, you know, up to date with what is happening. Um, and not just the trustees, but also the members, because in a time like this, there might be some amount of miscommunication, panic, you know, things like that. We want to meet with the members, make sure I have a couple of member session, you know, so that we can give them some amount of assurance, you know. I mean, we have, we have been through recessions, you know, we have, we have, we have had um, adverse economic impacts before. You know, but we have recovered, Jamaica have recovered, and I believe we're gonna recover from COVID-19 also. You know, but we need to, we want to have this face-to-face -face with the members, have the dialogue, keep on, you know, reassuring them. You know, it's very important at this time. Um, I cannot stress that, that too much. Uh, one of the questions earlier was, you know, there's a reduction in their value. That will be restored. You know, so, it's, so we want to always have this conversation going so people can keep the confidence. All right. You also, you also talk about a three-legged stool uh, approach. Can right. You, can you explain that? So Pension savings, you call it a three-legged three stool. stool. Right. So our pension plans at Sajikor, they are great, and they're giving a lot of value to members when they reach retirement. But... Pension plans in itself will not give you all the income necessary to take you through um, your retirement years, right? 
So, and COVID would have, would, have, would have taught us some good lessons. You need to have personal savings also and create wealth in addition. And NIS would be the third stool, right? But, but uh, the, the, the third leg of the stool. But the, the one I want to also remind people, personal savings, creating wealth outside of the pension plan, um, having money put aside for emergencies, you know, lay, being laid off, losing a job, you know, things like that. A benchmark should have always have at least about a three months salary put aside, not touching it at all, just in case, all right? We want to be talking to the members, you know, start thinking like this, start creating wealth, and Sajikor can help you to create that wealth. Um, the pension plan is good, and it serves its purpose, but you also need to have some other savings, and I want to talk to them about that too. All right, um, we, we're just about out of time uh, for this segment. We do have another speaker. Um, I, I, love, I love the idea that Sajikor is motivating as much as we do. And when there is so much doom and gloom, we have such a positive outlook. Regardless, if you think we're drinking some happy juice or optimistic juice here at Sajikor, you are absolutely correct, 100%. We drink it daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But as we close, I'd like to know if either of you, or maybe I should ask all of you to just share your final thoughts Maybe there's something that we didn't get to, to discuss. I know Neil had some stuff as well. Um, I, I'll start with you again, Latoya, if you could just share um, in just a minute. Sure. So one of the things that we're very optimistic about is where we're going to go this year. And one of the things that we're doing is continuing our digital journey. And we're putting in a new, what we call an end-to-end -end automation of our benefits process. Now, in a quick way to just kind of bring to mind what we're talking about, if you've ever applied for your NHG refund online recently, you know what I'm talking about. So you're putting information, it's just that ours is going to be smoother and even less easier because we know you, so you don't have to put in everything. All we're going to need from you is your banking information and if you want to change your beneficiary or not. Literally, that's all we need from you. So the HR will go online, so HR still has the control, will go online, select who is terminating or retiring, we will immediately, the population of the options will be instant. The member can, will be notified that it's there. They can go online, select their option, and literally all that will be left, will left is the pay, payment of the benefit. So that's gonna drive down the, the benefit payment process and the turnaround time significantly. And we're excited about the benefits that's gonna come from that. So I just wanna big up my team. Um, <laughs> I have to do that. You know, I work with an awesome team and they really help us to serve the clients well. And so. Oh. Is that true? <laughs> Trustees, are you loving your team? Boy, I just love Suzette. Suzette, no stop, thumbs up and clap and all them things. What one, Suzette? Yeah, big up you. Is that, is, are, we, are, we, are, are we doing a good job for you? Give them a round of applause if they are. Right. Jennifer, who's on the phone? She's, she's not listening. She's not paying attention to me. Thank God, she would probably trace me. Yeah. Neil, go ahead, please. Right. Any so, final thoughts? Yeah. yeah, thanks, Sally. So along those same lines, I mean, currently we have automated monthly statements that goes out to all clients. So now um, we have started the automation process for quarterly statements. And that's important because these quarterly statements they have a lot more information in terms of historical returns, um, compliance with the statement of investment policies and principles, you know, a lot more data, a lot more information so that trustees can make um, more informed decisions. You know? So by automating it, the, the, these reports you know, will go a little bit, little bit more timely um, and it should so serve trustees well going forward to 2021. All right, and Sean, finally. Any final thoughts from you? Well, first of all, I want to say a big thanks to your clients. I think we would not be here on this journey without your support. So I want to thank you for all the years that you've been with us and looking forward to um, serving you and meeting your investment needs over the next several years. Second thing I'd like to say is thanks to our team. I, I'd, I'd like to express to everybody on the call, uh, on this seminar rather, how hard each of the teams have been working and adapting, you know, you get in midnight emails or responses to questions and queries 
um, the team has really dug in and dug deep to ensure that they're investing like you know, that, you know every dollar alongside their own. So I just wanted to to share that commitment that the team has and has been very resilient um, through this process. And I think as a people, as a nation, we're very, very resilient. We know how to adjust and adapt when there's a hurricane alert or there's a, a, a new risk. You know, last year we had locals and the storm here. And, I mean, a couple of tremors there, and we're we're very resilient to the people. And I think as it applies to us here at Sajakor, I think our, our investment process has shown this level of resiliency, and it's going to be repeated in 2021, and it's going to be very measured, very, very careful and constructed in terms of how we approach our, our portfolios and how we view risk to ensure that we're really investing for the long term so we can deliver value to, to each and every one of you. So again, I just want to again say thanks to, to our clients and to our team members and looking forward to communicating with everyone in the course of the year. All right, thank you very much, Sean. And thank you, Neil. Thank you, Latoya. I did see a question in the chat that uh, raises something that I don't think we mentioned. Thanks to the management team for managing our funds. How about a COVID discount on management fees due to the fact that we have all been hit hard financially? But then I don't know if we mentioned that one-off uh, lump sum that we did. So I would love for you to. Yeah. So, well, we didn't mention it as yet, but um, one of the things that uh, Sajikor did when they analyzed what was happening, they decided that we would um, kind of take care of the more and more vulnerable sector, uh, which would be those guys who will be retiring, <clears throat> right? So we looked at all of those members who would be retiring um, and couldn't defer their retirement. So um, we looked at the, the losses they would have incurred um, if they retire based on how the funds are impacted by COVID-19. And depending on the extent of the loss, um, those people who are retiring would have gotten um, either a one-off lump sum or a top up on their monthly pension going forward. So everyone who retired during that period would have been a recipient um, of that kind of um, <clears throat> disbursement. Um, it was $60 million coming out of the investment fees that we used to do that. All right. All right. So that is all we gave back. Thank you so much, Neil, and I hope that answer was useful. Thank you very much, Neil, Latoya, Sean, and thank you again, once again, to our trustees who, who are still here. I mean, I love you guys. I feel so close to you, even though you're so far right now. Now, there is a special lady, a special friend of mine, Rochelle Cameron, who is about to grace us with her presence. Hi, Rashibu, what's up? I know that we have to introduce you properly, girl. We have a video. Wait there, wait there. Don't talk yet. Go ahead. An attorney at law with over 20 years at the Jamaican Bar, Rochelle Cameron is a former Crown Counsel with the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions in Jamaica. She has served as Vice President of Legal and Regulatory for Flow Caribbean and Company Secretary of Cable and Wireless Jamaica Limited and its subsidiaries. She has managed through crisis and organizational transformation with calm, collaborative, and decisive leadership and is established in the corporate community as an expert business strategist and stimulating communicator. Her blend of business acumen and organizational skills allows her to be a valuable contributor on various private and public sector boards. Ultimately, however, she is focused on the development of people and is committed to helping organizations create an enabling environment in which colleagues are engaged and motivated to tap into and unleash their brilliance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Rochelle Cameron. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is such a pleasure to be here. Um, I just want to ask my Sajikor team for that video because I'm going to need it. Alicia, you're doing a fantastic job. What a great event I have been on since nine o'clock taking my notes because, you know, sometimes you come to these seminars and when you leave, you can't come and leave the same way. You have to leave a little brighter and I'm feeling it. What a great event. What um, the, one of the things that has struck me is that we are focusing now on possibility, on outlook, 
and what is to come because we cannot stay where we started. And last year, you know, the 2028, <laughs> what a year, what a year, what a year. Now, I just want to also give myself a little locus standby for this event. I have had the privilege of serving on the Cable and Wireless Pension Plan for about 15 years um, under the very able leadership of a gentleman, Derek Jones. Hi, Derek. And I recall that when um, I was asked to serve on the pension plan, at the time I had considered myself quite young and I had wondered, you know, why would they pick this young, beautiful young lady to be on the pension plan? They said, I mean, look old. Isn't pension these discussions for old people? It's not for me. And I recall that Derek Jones called me and he said, um, I need you to think about this service. This is one of the most important roles you will ever play in your life. You are going to be making decisions with a team about people's future, their retirement future. So as you are considering whether you're gonna take up this role, know that this role is going to need commitment, it's gonna need your dedication, and it is going to mean that you are taking this thing as something that is one of the critical, significant things that you do. So I think give me that speech, I say, well, 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 let me really think about this trusty role. And I say, what a name to give it, trusty, a very trusted role. And I can tell you that having served as a trustee, it is one of the roles that I am most proud of because there are certain things that you do in life that feel purpose-led. That is things that are bigger than you, that you are making a significant contribution of your time, of your energy, of your focus on the future of people's lives, on their homes, the children, the grandchildren, all the dog, everybody. And trustees, I want you to applaud yourselves today for your dedication to this role as trustees, for the time and your effort, for your energy. Big up on yourself. You know how important this role is. And we have seen the effect of our role. When Latoya mentioned that none of the, um, the funds were wound up in 2020 with the vagaries of COVID, that is amazing. Oh, I'm getting to see a couple of people because you know I like to see the people. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Selma. Hi, Lydia. Hey, Barbara. Good to see you. Marjorie, good to see you. Everton, whatever you're eating, I want some of that. Thank you. <laughs> now, today we're talking about resilience and we're talking about recovery. Um, I recently went to visit with one of my grandons with my mask, of course. So we're talking about 2020 and she's about 94 years old. And she says, the first time when the young people are going through anything, <laughs> when they get hurricane warning, at least the earth shake a little bit with an earthquake. But all of a sudden, everything feel like it just slide out from under, I don't know, I manage so well. So I said, you know, auntie, and we're talking about just resilience. And I like the word grit. I like grit. That notwithstanding, despite what is happening around you, you still get up, dust off, and go. So I gave her a nice speech about resilience and grit. I'm saying, Auntie Maria, really, try to come through this COVID time. And she said, you know what it take? It take gumption. Let me say gumption. Yeah, man. She said, you ever watching a manish water bubbling through the day? And you see those ingredients coming in the pot. And at the end of the day, people say, go down in the soup and bring up the gumption. She says, in this COVID time, when you go down, when you go into the who you are, you have any gumption? 
And it was something I had to really think about because it's very, very easy for us to get caught in the wave of COVID and not see any outlook for anything better. Sean Newman spoke earlier about opportunities. And I know sometimes that in the midst of this crisis, we're like opportunities. We don't really want to hear about that now. We don't see we're having a, another big wave. But we do have to ask ourselves, is this something that is happening to me? Or what is actually happening for me through this crisis? I see our Danny Williams, and I have, I'm actually reading his book, his autobiography for the second time. <laughs> and one of the things I thought is what an amazing adventure his life has been. When I look at the challenges that he has faced in starting a business, building a business, seeing FinSAC through a business, hurricanes, earthquakes, all of that. And I said to myself, what is it? What is it that takes you through? It is the resilience. It's the grit. It's the gumption that makes you see things bigger than yourself. That makes you not see today, but makes you live the dream, notwithstanding and despite what seems to be going on around you at the time. People, do we have the gumption? So here yeah, we look back on 2020, you know, and when 2021 lick, you know, when we hear the bells lick for 2021, even though it was a curfew, so we did that for their we yard, we were like, we're just so glad that year they're done. But you know, when we look back at a year that some of us never thought we could work from home, some of us never so bright with the technology. So when we say Zoom, we only know if we Zoom in a car. Now we are putting up backdrops. Hmm? We all have virtual background. We're sharing screen. My goodness gracious, what a year that has happened for us. What a year of learning. What a year of movement for who we are. Yes, I know the children learning at home is not easy. <laughs> And you know, Alicia asked a question earlier about what are some of the embarrassing things that have happened to you on Zoom? Let me share quickly. I was doing a little construction at the yard here and I was going to do a presentation. So I spoke with the gentlemen that were working. I said, sirs, I'm going to need about 20 minutes of complete silence. No drilling, no noise making, no loud talking. Thank you. Um, through the presentation, it seems like I didn't realize the 20 minutes had not ended. So when I finished, I looked through the window and I bawled out to them. He said, oh, no, no, you're Mr. Vitapi nice. Now, I had not put my microphone on silent. I had muted myself. <laughs> oh, my God. When I say shame, because, you know, when I returned, not only in the chat, but every comment was, oh, no, no, you're Mr. Vitapi nice. <laughs> What a time this has been. What a difference in who we are this time has been. You know, as we're going through and we're hearing all of this information, Marla did such a brilliant presentation with the GDP. As I listened to Neil, as I listened to Sean talk about the outlook, as I listened to Latoya, and I, as we're going through and when Candice set up the stage and I said, you know what, trustees, I hope as soon as this recording comes out, you're watching it over and over again. Because you know what this time has also taught us? We can't just sit back again and the only thing we're reading and participating in is Facebook updates. We've got to know what's going on in the world because all of us were guilty, you know. Last year, February, last year, January, when we see the COVID thing down at China, here we know. <laughs> the Chinese people look like they're having a problem down here. On the China, let them come to Jamaica. And just like that, we are actually approaching one year of this, 
of the effect right here in Jamaica. Are you looking at 2021 as your recovery time? And you know what? When we're thinking of recovery, we can't go back to where we are coming from. We've got to know that this time has been the most significant dynamic time of change, of learning, of growth, no matter how difficult it has been. Because let me tell you, you don't gain muscles when you lift, lift light weights. I have a way when I go to the gym, I don't like to work out, I like five pound weights, because I look good with five pound weights. Because when I'm lifting five pound weights, I look nice, I look bright, I look, I look fit. You give me all a 15 and a 20 pound weight. And you know, sometimes when you go to the gym and you do that, when you're driving home, you can't even bend your hand. And you know, gentlemen, sometimes you go and you lift the heavy weights. For weeks later, you can't even move around. You're moving like a robot. But guess what? You are building muscle and resilience. You are bringing yourself back. You are recovering. But let me tell you, if we are going back, we can't just go back to how we were, you know. We have to say, what have I built over this time? How have I changed over this time? What have I learned over this time? And how, how am I molding? How, am, how have I been molded for the next 10 years? Huh? What, don't look at this as a time that has happened to you. This time has happened for you. Because guess what? Your future needed this challenge. Yes, you needed. Some of us had gotten lazy. Some of us had gotten comfortable. So now we discomfortable because we pass uncomfortable and we are discomfortable for the next phase of our lives. There will never be another normal for us because we know that the new normal is every single day that we wake up. And you know, when I heard the song made away, cause that was my song. Cause I was like, Lord, you gotta make a way. Some things you promised me. I said, why, why, well, you can bring COVID when you did promise me these nice things. But guess what? For the nice things to happen, for the next step to happen, we had to go through this time. How are we going to be different when we are recovering? And I want us to see the recovery. You know when we say, we'll and come again. Huh? When we say, we'll and come again. When we will and come again, how are we coming? No fenke fenke. No panka panka. Huh? We have to be coming back with that gumshan. Lacretia, where is your gumshan? Are you coming back the same way? Gillian Crosskill, are you coming back? Is 2021 going to be a repeat? We can't just sit on there and just, oh, woe is me. No, woe is not us. We are Jamaicans. Ray Gregory, we are Jamaicans. We are a people of the gumption. So ask yourself, in this time, does the soup of my life have the ingredients that when you go down in the pot, what comes up? Does strength come up? Does courage come up? Does faith come up? Does notwithstanding and despite the challenges, I will dust myself off and step out. Does that come up? That's what we constantly need to be asking ourselves. Because guess what? We have been chosen as trustees for purpose-led, purpose-driven work. And if nothing else, we know our lives have meaning. We matter, our existence matters because the work that we are doing affects this nation. It affects the people of this nation. It affects their future. So now when we step out, we are like 2021. Guess who's home? Guess who's ready? Because we will dust, we will step, we will move because we've got the gumption. So when we wheel and come again, <laughs> Sister Jacqueline Maria, when we wheel 
and come again in 2020, 21, in Corinne Bellamy, we know that we are stepping differently. We can give God thanks that he made a way. We can give God thanks that we were able to live through history. So when we have our grandchildren then, we teeth drop out our mouth, we have a story to tell. Eh? We've got a story to tell. So now we're bubbling. Our part of life is bubbling. Those ingredients are coming in, those challenges, the sweet nuts, the nice soap, because it's gumption time, people. Resilience and recovery. Enjoy the rest of this conference. But individually and collectively, as we step through 2021, let's step through as teams, looking out for each other with empathy. But let's walk with a different level of courage. I have a sign above my head, it says, go be great. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord will be with you wherever you go. Believe, walk strong, walk good. Thank you very much. What? No, sir. What a word, my feel for collect an offering. <laughs> Where's she gone? She gone? Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> No, bring her back, bring her back from full script. Rochelle, you never have to go on, so. You never have to talk to us, so strong. <coughs> Rochelle, thank you so much. I know you can't see our chat where it was live. First of all, the way we, we, we applaud people in the chat is by typing a whole heap of ones. But because you can't see what they're saying, she can't see? Who can zoom in? So I can't. One, punch up a one, punch up a one. <laughs> Not true. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. But there is one that I really want to and need to share it with you. It's from our good friend, Derek Jones. He says, Roche Hi, Rochelle. Please tell me where to send the check. <laughs> That's the kind of man I like. That's the kind of, not that kind of message that we want. Him have, him have the gumption. <laughs> gumption. Him have the gumption. You understand? The gumption. The gumption. Thank you so much, Rochelle. And as you know, whenever you speak to me virtually, I, I always have to say to you, just imagine somebody coming right now and giving you the orchid for your presentation. Yes. <laughs> and then you smile, pose, smile for the camera. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Another round of applause for Rochelle Cameron, please. Thank you, thank you, Rochelle. Sister Jacqueline, it did nice, eh? No, we say it did, wait, Sister Jacqueline put up a clapping emoji. Okay, yeah, you. No problem. All right, so we have, we have to give away something. I feel in a giving mood after that. I have the gumption to give away everything at Sajiko right now. All right, I didn't hear, I didn't hear my boss say hi, ho. take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> All right, so where should, we, where should we go next? Remember, it's your choice. So tell me where you want to go next. And if I could just, somebody tell me if I'm, tell me when I should stop walking. Right there, all right, good. Riddle. Shanae Ford says Riddle. You love a Riddly? I make two people out of one, what am I? I make two people out of one, what am I? Nicole, I'll go to guess the word next. I make, oh, oh wait, wait. I make two people out of one. Sandra Barnett says couple. Janice Grant Taff, where you answer the people them question for Janice? Mother. <laughs> Debbie Ann says God. Lindell says marriage. Mar Marion Ibank says shadow. David McDonald says great presentation and is applauding. David, pay attention here, come on. <laughs> God, mother, mother, God, mirror. Uh, pregnancy, sure does. Mirror, couple, mirror, mirror, God. All right, so who had it? What is the answer? A mirror, yes. I love, the, I love how you say God, though. That's, that's nice, yeah? 
a mirror. Who said it first? I think that was tri the entire trial club HR department. Okay, sure. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, let's go to guess the word now. Woi, woi, woi. We have a dollar sign. We have eggs. We have some wicker baskets. We have a crowd of people. That crowd of people, especially right now, look like they're all going to get COVID. Um, <laughs> all right, so I see don't put all your eggs in one basket. I see money market. I see crowdfunding. Janice, really? <laughs> Debbie Ann, harvest. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, says Nicole. Arlene Lawrence, University Council of Jamaica, says diversify. Um, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Savings. Terry Ann Jackson says trade. Um, uh, okay, let's see what the answer is. Diversification. Can we go back? So the word that we're trying to get from all of this is diversification. So what we're saying is, and I think this is really cute, by the way, because I just got it, so I have to explain it. So there is, because I don't know, I didn't know what was coming up, but I didn't know the answer. So it's eggs with the red cross out, and then the basket. So don't put your eggs in one basket if, it, basket if it was just the two. But don't you see the diverse group of people in the right-hand corner? That's what we're trying to, isn't that cool? Come give the game, gaming people a round of applause. Clap them. The gaming people are lovely. But nobody, did anybody, oh, Arlene Lawrence said diversify. So Ar Arlene Lawrence was the one who was correct. Nicole said it blurry. Nicole, want to tell um, something. By the way, we have an entertainer coming up. Elaine is going to be here right now, almost like right now, right after I give away the rest of Sajikor things. Um, okay, next one. Next one. We finished with riddles now. Are we finished with riddles? Pension fund, pension plan. Okay, Ann Williams want pension plans. What percentage of the workforce is covered under the private pension industry? Megan Lindo says 12. Novlin Small says 27, 12, 12. So Lindell says 10. Karen Chung says 20, 26, 15, 10, less than 10, 9. All right, let me see what's the answer. 10%, 10%, 10%. So the answer for that is Lindell. Lindell, congratulations to you, Lindell. All right, so as I promised, there is a lovely lady. She is a fantastic, fantastic. I Mark, take out that, ready for it. Boogie down, boogie down. Now, here's what you're gonna do for me. I know some of you are at home. I know some of you are at work. Everybody should be at work at home-ish, kind of. But what we're saying is, just dress back the chair a little bit. Dress back the chair a little bit. Stand up, Sister Jacqueline. Because it's time to dance. Are we ready? It is time to dance. Who is that? Does that say Annette Wilson? Yeah, you're still sitting in the chair, is what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to understand what's happening. You understand? And try all club HR department is still, all I want to still sit on in the chair. All of the one of you still say, look at you. Yes, yes, girl. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, the virtual stage, Elaine. All right, here we go. Sajid Kaur. How is everybody feeling today? I hope we know that we are champions. Now all my champions say yeah, yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. All my champions say yeah, yeah, yeah. Now scream! It's my time, it's my place, it's my destiny. No one can take away what was meant for me. Me granny say, what for you can be and for you. No man never say what God planned for you, yeah. The best is yet to come. If I believe I can, I will. No holding back, no giving in. 
Cause I know I was, I was, I was, I was, I was born to win. Was born to win. I, 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 I was born to win. Yeah, yeah. I have the heart of a champion. If you know you have the heart of a champion and you know you are resilient and you can recover from anything, I just want you to just pat your chest like this, pat your chest like this, as we give praise to God for carrying us through 2020, and he's still carrying us now. So, DJ Denver, let's move on to rise in love, because I do not believe in falling in love. I feel like every time I ever drop, it hurt. And so I wrote this song about rising in love instead. And let us do that. Let us rise to the occasion. Good things are in store for us, so let's claim it. Here we go. Didn't want to fall in love no more. Was so sad I felt so many times I hit the floor. Hurt so bad I didn't want no one to bring me down. Was sick and tired You came and lift me off the ground And you take me higher We rise We rise in you And I keep rising We rise We rise in love Higher we're flying Our love will me from all the pain I felt before I met you dried my eyes and made me smile again you helped me get through now I know what love's supposed to be it's like you're flying now I know the love I found is real cause it keeps on rising rise. we're rising you A round of applause. We've made it through. We are resilient. We will recover. That is the tone that we are walking in. We are stepping in. We are standing in the authority of the belief that we will make it through. Sajikor, it is a blessing for me to be here with you. And now I'd like to give you a little bit of a story. Now, this part of the show is called Sing Along Song. What's it called? Can I hear you? What is it called? Oh, yes, yes. And I love the vibrance with which you are re responding to me. Let us keep it rising, because that's what we're doing. Now, this is a story, and it's about two ladies. How many ladies is it about? Two ladies. One of them named Sharon. What's her name? Now, Sharon is a nice and clean and decent lady. Sajikor. Sa Sa Sharon, you know, does lots of business with Sajikor because she's that kind of lady. She's also a nurse. And she works in New York and 
she had one of those very late nights. Now, Sharon has a co-worker, and her name is Liza. What is her name? Now, you know what them say about Liza, right? They say, Mota Masi Liza, you know hear your mama, they call you. So Liza is a chatty, chatty one. In the, in the hospital. Now, Sharon had a long night. She's at the train station in New York waiting to come home, and in walks Liza. And Liza and Sharon, I make four, and Sharon said, oh my goodness, she see me. So Liza walk up to her, and, and she said, Sharon, where are you going? And Sharon said, I am going home on the morning train. Now if you know it, sing along, say, I am going home on the... Oh yeah, the evening train will be too late. So I am going home on the morning train. So Liza say, hey, hey, you're going home on the morning train, but me have one so figgy, yo. And Sharon looked at Liza and says, you know the only thing I want you give me is this. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. <sighs> so Liza realized Sharon never in the chatty chatty with her and that's how we have to deal with negative people, you know. We either have to step out of the conversation entirely or totally turn it around. But Liza said she's going to try one more time. So she said, hey Sharon, what you think about the mix-up where you hear about a guan down so? Sharon looked at Liza and she said, all I want to tell you is what you think about Jesus, he's all right. What you think about Jesus, he's all right. What you think about Jesus, he's all right. He's all right, all right, all right. So finally, no. The train come. Thank you, God. And Sharon stepped into the train and she turned and she looked at Liza and said, King David sit upon a heavenly throne. Hallelujah. Say people business and leave it alone. Sing hallelujah. And if you know that, that is a way we deal with people that want to drag us into their negativity. But we are not having any part of that. Let me just see you. Just raise up an applause right now because we are all about moving forward. We are positive people. We're not staying with you. We're not chatting people business. We are growing as we go. Now, DJ Denvo, I hear the music that you are playing. And this song is called No Ordinary Love. And if you know the beauty of love to lift us out of anything and to keep us moving forward, I'd just like you to rock along with me as we celebrate being alive, having love, and knowing that the best is yet to come. Here we go. In your arms I'm safe, secure. Every care around me melts away. When you hold me, I forget every word that I wanted to say. I am freely lost in your love. There's no one else for me. I surrender completely. Oh, oh, my heart's racing. I'm shaking, caught up in the love. This is no, this is no ordinary love. Oh, baby, your skin. Ah, this is no, this is no ordinary love. I don't ever want to say goodbye. I could never breathe, never survive. Baby, you're my reason why. I believe there's meaning in my life. I have faith in love, faith in us, and faith that this is right. I surrender forever tonight. Ooh, ooh, my heart's racing. I'm caught up.
love in the love. This is no, this is no ordinary love. You're mine. It's so good I feel. This is no, this is no ordinary love. Extraordinary, more than special. Every moment we're together. More than love, more than enough. I'm never leaving, never. Every second, every minute, love and I have fallen in it with you and only you. Ordinary, just what I do, yeah. Caught up in the love. This is no, this is no ordinary love. You're This is no ordinary love. Every, every moment that I'm awake, every, every moment of every day, I love how you take my no ordinary love. And now we are waving goodbye to all of our troubles. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for the clap. I appreciate it. We are waving goodbye to all of our troubles and our fears. We are soldiers on the side of love. And because we know that our words do not return to us void, let's say goodbye to the crosses. Away my troubles, bye-bye. Come on. Bye-bye, bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. No war in our side. Bye-bye, bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. Can't conquer I. Bye-bye, bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. No, not this time. Bye bye bye, bye 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 bye. Sadie Corme going sing a happy song. Everybody sing along. Cause God know the things and the time them set away. Wonders and signs we are stress away. No things far we mind we are fret away. Sing a happy tune. Me no want hear bad news. But bad mind and bad things now keep bad company. So when them come with them negativity, we wave our hands in the air. What do we say? Bye bye. Bye bye bye, bye 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 bye. No war in our side. Bye bye bye, bye 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 bye. Can't conquer I. Bye bye bye, bye 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 bye. No, not this time. Bye bye bye, bye 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 bye. Now Jonathan McReynolds is a great singer, but he's not the one that is singing the song that I'm going to sing next. <laughs> so now, bye-bye is a very strong word. And it is a word that we can use to send all the things that we never wanted in our lives away. And so we sing. So long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye-bye. And we sing it one more time. Bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye-bye. So with power, with my troubles, bye-bye. Bye 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 bye. No war in our side. Bye 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 bye. Can't conquer I. No 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 no. No not this. No not this. No not this time. As Rochelle would say, we have the gumption. Let us use our words to lift us higher as we strive for more, as we recover, as we stand in our authority to overcome. Thank you so much for holding a positive vibe with me. God bless you and keep you. Enough love. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Thank you, Elaine. I love you, baby. And I love Sister Jacqueline. You know what she said to me? She said, you don't want me stand up. Can you, I'm a jean. You two out of order. You two out of order with it. With, 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 mm. Hello, my boss. 
of bosses, <laughs> the, my boss emeritus, Dr. The Honorable R. Danny Williams. You can't see him, but how are you doing, sir? How are you? Thank you for staying with us all day. All day you've been here with us. Yeah, I love that. Anyway, so as Elaine said, bye, 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 bye. I can't sing. Anyway, it has been our absolute pleasure to bring you this virtual pension seminar. We thank you very much for joining us. It has been a truly remarkable experience for all of us. We never planned like this before, ever. Everything, in fact, it's, today is the first day that a lot of us are seeing each other since last year. So this is all for you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, we, we appreciate your comments as well. And there are some persons who had some questions or you may not have asked your questions and you want to still ask them, remember your pension trustees, uh, pension trustees, your pension administrators are here for you and communication is the order of 2021. We'll keep talking to you. We'll keep annoying you with phone calls. That's what we do and that, that's what we love. So have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe and stay six feet apart. Have a blessed day. Big up copper shot. <laughs>